What's up guys? How are you doing today? I'm super excited about today's build because we're gonna learn new libraries and we're gonna learn new things and that is always a fun thing to do. So without further ado, let's jump into uh, what we're gonna build today and uh, yeah, see what we're gonna learn by the end of this video. Okay, uh, you recommended me to build the, a fantasy application based on the uh, official UEFA um, fantasy application. So that's what we are gonna do today. And I took this um, opportunity to, to learn something new together with you and to teach you something new. And today we're gonna do that uh, using React Native and Recoil, which is a global state management developed by Facebook. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, I have two ma main goals for today's video. The first one is to get you started with React Native. If you are a beginner, this is a perfect place to learn React Native uh, because we're gonna start from scratch and we're gonna work with a lot of uh, easy components in the beginning and later on adding more advanced features and by then you're gonna have a fully functional application. The second goal for me is to get you introduced to Recoil, which is, as I said, a global state management developed by Facebook. It is very uh, optimal and efficient for React and React Native applications. But more than that, uh, later I'm gonna explain you everything about it, how to use it and so on. Okay, what uh, exactly you will learn by uh, the end of this video? First of all, you'll learn how to set up a React Native project using Expo. Um, you're gonna do that from scratch. So if this is the first time you're working with React Native, don't worry, we got you. Then you're gonna learn how to render built-in components such as texts, lists, images, flat lists, and so on. Uh, after that, we're gonna get into more advanced things like creating your own components, reusing them, uh, throughout your application and everything is gonna be done with functional components with hooks, which are uh, new features of React and the new way of building um, React and React native applications. Uh, yeah, we're gonna speak about props, state, how to manage data, how to send data between components um, and so on. And by the end, we're also gonna use an external library uh, that is bottom sheet, which will help us display some extra information that is, is gonna come from the bottom of the screen. Um, so everything is gonna be done with TypeScript, which is uh, the same JavaScript, however, with types, uh, which is much better because it's much safer. Uh, and it, it is really used a lot in big projects, so it's better to get used to it. Uh, now, okay, on the recoil side, uh, we're gonna start with what is recoil, uh, the advantages of recoil uh, in uh, for a React Native and React application compared to other solutions that already exist, such as Redux or uh, Context API and so on. Then we're gonna learn how to integrate recoil in the React Native application, in the application that we're gonna build today. We're gonna speak about atoms and selectors, which are the only two building blocks uh, of recoil and they make very easy to understand and to, to work with uh, global state. But you're gonna see that uh, in the video. Also, we're gonna speak about how to manage asynchronous logic. Um, and you're gonna see how easy it is compared to other libraries like Redux, where you would have to use some uh, extra libraries just to make an API call. Uh, and yeah, today we're gonna do that as well. We're gonna uh, fetch an external REST API, and we're gonna see how to, to manage this data that is asynchronous, that will come from a server. All right, so, uh, let me show you a bit what exactly we're gonna build from the UI standpoint and from the feature standpoint. Here is the screen. Uh, I will, I'll be focusing this video on the team building screen, the screen where you'll be able to see, uh, see your team. You're gonna be able to view players, view uh, your selected players or the players that you can select. Uh, we're gonna implement the functionality of selecting the players, managing a budget, making sure that you are within that budget, and so on. And also, 
very important, we are gonna do filters. Um, and that will show you how, uh, how, to, do, how to integrate filters and uh, this de derivative data e using recoil. Yeah, that's, that's the plan. If you're new here, hello, my name is Vadim. Welcome to the channel. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna talk a lot about me uh, because you probably heard uh, in the past videos. Uh, I'm just gonna sh share with you what we are doing here and what is my goal with this channel, which is learning you uh, how to become a full stack developer with modern te technologies uh, and doing this in a fun, interactive way by building real projects. So uh, on the channel, we have already built uh, WhatsApp, Uber, um, Tesla clone, and a lot of more uh, applications. So if you're new here, go check them out uh, and you'll learn a lot of things. All right, so also don't forget to subscribe to the channel because that will help me a lot. Um, okay, with that being said, I always encourage you guys to follow along and to implement the things that I'm doing here yourself uh, together with me. And if you want to do that, you will need a couple of things. First of all, you will need to download the asset bundle. Usually I'm preparing their dummy data, images, icons, this PDF presentation with step-by-step -step guide uh, how, to, how to implement everything and some bonus cookies there. So to get, to get the um, asset bundle, go to assets.notjust.dev slash euro2020. Uh, as well, you need the Expo CLI installed. Uh, follow this link, it's pretty simple to install it. And I choose Expo because this is the easiest way to get started with React Native. And if you can do this with Expo, you will be able to do it with React Native CLI. So just to, to make it easy for everyone to get started, we're gonna use Expo. Optionally, uh, you'll also need a Rapid API account uh, because at the end of the video, if we will have time, we will um, fetch the data from uh, Rapid API, uh, from an API that is hosted there. So um, yeah, you can do that later when we get there. So with that said, I think we have our introduction done and we will be able to get started. So hello everyone in the chat, how are you doing guys? I see that a lot of people are excited about today's build. I uh, didn't think that um, this fantasy app will govern so many people. It's really awesome. Where, where are you coming from, guys? Okay, from Vietnam. Hello. Uh, is Recoil the uh, same as Redux? Um, they solve the same problem, which is global state management, but they are completely different. And uh, Recoil comes to solve a lot of problems that Redux have. Redux uh, has a really uh, steep learning curve. Uh, you have to, uh, to develop a different mentality when working with Redux. And for beginner, it's really intimidating. That's why I didn't want to, uh, to push Redux to you guys, because for a lot of people it will be uh, confusing. Redux may be um, optimal in big applications. Uh, so in small applications, nowadays people use context API because with functional components with hooks, uh, this is possible to do with context API, which is much simpler uh, API than Redux. However, context API was not built for state management. It was built for uh, storing data that is updated very uh, rarely, not very often. So it has some disadvantages as well. So that's why uh, Facebook decided to build uh, a library that will solve these both problems. And that's why what we are going to do today. So I see someone donated. Oh, hello. Where is it? Salman Fazal, thank you very much for the donation, bro. Much love. Okay, let's uh, see a couple of more chats and let's get started because I think I planned too much for today. I always 
um, overestimate the time that it will take to build everything. Uh, I found your channel a few days ago. You made my life easier. Thank you very much. I'm really glad that uh, you found the content helpful. Uh, video about React Native testing. About testing React Native apps. Okay, thank you for the suggestion. Maybe we will do that in future. Uh, Recoil, let's go. Do you, ha do you have experience about Recoil or do you, uh, have you heard about Recoil in the past? I'm really curious about that. Alexandra from Moldova, hello. Uh, Bangladesh, India, India, Nigeria, hello, Vietnam. Yes, uh, Recoil is still in the experimental phase, uh, but uh, we, we've done a lot of progress here and it's still a new library. So we are still working on this. And, um, and yeah, I think that it's a great opportunity for us to learn it now and be ready because uh, I believe that a lot of companies will switch from other state management systems to Recoil. Uh, yeah, just because how, uh, how natively it integrates with React and React Native applications. You will see that it's almost the same as working with local state. Okay. Can you <laughs> tell an estimate amount of time this will take? I really hope that this video will be not more than three hours. And probably when you see this video not live, uh, and you look down there and it's five or six hours, you'll, you'll laugh at this, but I, I'll, I'll try to, to keep it short. And with that being said, uh, let's get to, to work. Uh, yeah, I wanted to show you a bit of demo of what uh, I have prepared. So yeah, it's gonna be easier for you to understand what we will do by the end of this video. Okay, here is our uh, field. Here is our team that we want to, uh, to build. Uh, we have a view players at the bottom. We select it. Here we see a list of players. They are coming from uh, the API. Uh, yeah, like the name, image is correct. Like the, the country, as you see, is hard coded uh, and the price as well. So basically you can select it and it's going to be here like you see the goalkeeper is selected if i press again it's deselected and so on so i can do that and um, yeah you'll see that if i want to select the fifth defender I, i'm not able to do that because i already have five on the on the field and if i deselect one and select the, the other one i'm able to do that also we have filters and if i want to see only defenders i go back here i see only defenders if I want to see only goalkeepers, I can do that. Come here, there are no goalkeepers. Uh, forward, yeah, these are the two players playing in the attack. So yeah, this is basically the application. We're gonna try to do a better design during the live stream. If we will have time, this, is, this was just um, a test for me to, to make sure that everything is planned. So I will put it here and we can get started uh, okay nope not here here so the first step is to initialize an expo application we are gonna do that using expo init uh, and the name of the project before that go ahead and ins uh, install and set up your expo cli so here is my terminal let me make it bigger that's what she said Okay, YouTube live streams. Okay. Uh, okay, let's let's do it. Expo you need uh, we have a clone, something like that. Give it a name. Then Expo will ask you to choose a template. Um, in this project, we will not need navigations and we will not need tabs. 
However, this template tabs with TypeScript comes with some pre-installed libraries that we will need and that will be very useful for us and it will save us a lot of time such as uh, icons and so on. So let's choose tabs with TypeScript and then we will get rid of the things that we don't need. So make sure to choose the third option, tabs with TypeScript. This is important. This is uh, the boilerplate, the template uh, that our project is going to be initialized with. And after that, yeah, we will develop our, develop our features. So let's wait a bit until it uh, installs all the dependencies. Uh, the question is, will we use very coil today or in the next episode? I uh, really hope that we will do it today. So my plan is to, to do everything that I talked about today in this video. The, the UI is not that complicated. So I hope that I'll be able to do it in one hour. And then we can, I really want to focus this video specifically on um, recoil and global state management. So for the UI, I might hurry a bit and do things faster. Nonetheless, I will explain all the steps that I'm doing as always. So don't worry about that. Uh, I don't know, TypeScript. Uh, that's not a problem. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna explain about TypeScript as well. Basically, all the JavaScript that you write will be a valid TypeScript because TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. It's JavaScript with something on top. So if you write JavaScript, it's gonna be valid TypeScript. Um, so yeah, the only difference is for each variable that you declare, you define a type. So you declare variable A, you say that it's a string and TypeScript will make sure that when you use that variable, you use it as a string always, not like adding it or making mathematical operation with it. Okay, so we have our project initialized. I'm gonna uh, do CD uh, and the folder that I used. Oh, yeah, clone. And I'm gonna write uh, code and dot in order to open this current directory with um, Visual Studio Code. Okay, here it is. Okay, like this. Come on. Oh, it's already fun. <laughs> okay, so first things first, let's just run the application as it is right now and see what we have at the moment. So I'm gonna open the terminal and run yarn start. This will start uh, a new browser window with Expo uh, dashboard. Here it is. I think uh, I should stop the other project from running. Yes. Ruski na bazi. Hello. Okay. Uh, in this dashboard, we will be able to run our application on our emulators. If you are on Windows or Linux, you can do the, this on Android, run on Android device or emulator. Uh, if you are on iOS, run on iOS simulator, or if you don't have any simulators, emulators installed, don't worry, just scan with uh, Expo Go application this QR code. Uh, yeah, first of all, download the Expo Go app from uh, the market. It's available both for iOS and Android. And then you scan this uh, QR code and you'll be able to see and develop it directly on your phone. Okay, let's, uh, I'm gonna run it on iOS simulator just because it works a bit better on my system here. Mm -hmm. Like this. The good thing about your builds is the assets uh, bundle and the slides that you're providing. Oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate that you find this helpful. 
initially I didn't think about that and but yeah after a couple of builds I have started to to create this because it really helps you get started and yeah I spend a lot of time just creating the dummy data providing the images um, and all the assets that will save you a lot of time while developing and will make it possible for you to, to work together with me. Yeah, because I remember when, yeah, back in the days when I was doing and um, the tutor in the tutorial were, were like explaining something and, okay, let me grab something. He was copy pasting like half of a page or three pages. He pasted there and yeah, I'm gonna just copy paste this and it should work. And you stay there like, what did you do? Like. What should I do? How, how to, to replicate this? So I don't want to, to have the same experience. I want you to be able to, to do it step by step. Okay. Building JavaScript. Yeah, it should take a bit of time. Will it be fully functional too? Like who is winning and what's the score one player has collected just like the fantasy application? Um, that's not decided yet. It's not gonna be fully functional uh, in today's video because as I said, I want to focus on React, React Native and Recoil uh, and how to build your, your team. But later, uh, yeah, we can think. If you want guys me to continue, we can implement more features like saving the team and then uh, updating the score, having the scoring system and so on. But that's quite, uh, quite a lot of work to, to be done. So that's why, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Okay, so our application uh, has run on our emulator. We should see two tabs, tab one and here tab two. Uh, let's open our code here and let's just shortly have a look at what folders do we have in project structure. The first thing is the assets. We're gonna add, yeah, let's, let's add right now the assets that we will need. So I'm gonna go in the assets bundle that you can download following the link in the description. And here we have images. We will put the image here, the field image. Then we have some dummy data. Actually, we can grab the whole data folder and put it in assets. And uh, what other assets do we have here? Oh, come on. Uh, images, assets, screenshots. Yeah, I think that's, that should be it. Okay, so this is the assets folder. We have data, uh, we have images here. Then we have components. Uh, here we're gonna, uh, create our custom components that we will be able to reuse throughout our, our application. More on that later. Uh, constants folder, uh, yeah, a folder with some constants that we have in our application, such as colors here. Uh, okay, what else? Hooks, that's uh, out of the scope of this build because we are not gonna create custom hooks. We're gonna just use them. Navigation, this folder holds all the information about the navigation, like the bottom tab navigator, the root navigator that contains like the, yeah, the root and the not found screen. Uh, and the last thing is the screens. Here we uh, create the components for our screens. And uh, yeah, at the moment we have tab one screen and tab two screen. Uh, yeah, also a very important file is the app.tsx. This is the entry file of our application. So everything starts from here. Uh, yeah, at the moment we just render the navigation. However, uh, yeah, I don't want to, uh, to make it complicated for you guys with navigation. So let's do one thing right now. Let's import uh, tab one screen and let's remove navigation. 
and just render the tab one screen. This is gonna be much easier for us because we will work only on one screen today. So we should see the tab one screen. However, we don't uh, have like the bottom tabs, like the, the, the top um, title and so on. This is uh, gonna simplify a lot of things. Okay, we have that. Uh, yeah. Without going into a lot of details there, we can uh, go open our screens, tab one screen. And here is where we will continue our work. So we have uh, our component, our screen here in the in this tab one screen function. This contains a container view with uh, a text tab one, which we see here uh, as the title of this page. Then we uh, have a separator and the edit screen info, which is a custom component found in our components folder. We can actually delete these three lines and leave only the container. Uh, what else? From here, we don't need the separator, we don't need the title, we need only the container. So we have an empty um, canvas from where we can start working clean. Can you zoom in a blist uh, or make the font bigger? Okay, let's try to do this. Okay, okay, where are we? All right, so the first thing that we have to work on is the field screen. Uh, it consists of an image background with this field, then um, a representation of the teams rendered like on this field. Uh, then on the top, we have this stats container showing how many, how, the budget, how many players do we have, and the bottom button on the bottom button on the bottom okay okay let's get it started so for the image for the image we can use a very yeah like a component custom a component that will be imported from react native here the component is called image background it's quite similar to an image component, but it is used to render it as a background image. Um, yeah, similar to setting a background image on a div uh, in web development, like for yeah, using CSS. Here, that is possible using this image background. And also we should import our uh, image itself, which is this field image. So uh, field, we are gonna import it from, okay, up one folder, then assets, images, then field.jpg. Okay, and this image, uh, yeah, let's close this tag, image, background, like this. And let's give it a source, because it needs to know what image to, to render. And the source, in our case, is going to be our field image, right? Uh, let me have a look here. Also, it needs some style with some width. And I'm gonna give style, uh, we're gonna set an object with styles here where width will be 100% because we want, uh, we want it to cover the whole width of the screen, right? Uh, but for the height, let me just add some random number here and then speak about that. So the height, we could set 100% here but that's not very accurate. Uh, you see, we don't see the sides of the, um, uh, yeah, of the field. Uh, to fix that, we're gonna set a, a resize mode to this component. And the resize mode will be 
can have uh, contain cover, which is the most uh, used. So the cover is this default option where the image will try to cover the whole space of the container that it is displayed in, even though it will lose some parts like the top or the bottom. However, if, you, if we want to render the whole image on the screen, like not the whole screen to be covered with the image, but the whole image to be visible, we will use contain. And in that case, the image will resize in order to match uh, yeah, one, one height or the width and to be displayed as a whole. However, yeah, like the top part and the bottom part are still part of our image background uh, container and we don't have like space for other components. So uh, how we can do that? A better way is to somehow calculate the height automatically so that the width will be full screen, but the height will be like automatically how uh, automatically resized based on the width. So uh, one way to do that would be to set an aspect ratio. And the aspect, aspect ratio will keep the, the height, um, the relationship between height and width the same as the original image. So the original image in our case I think it was two over three. Um, I can add some background color red in order to see how big is the, is the parent component of the image. So you see, it covers the whole red part. We don't have anything else because if it would be, I don't know, uh, three over three, we would see red parts here. 2 over 3 is perfect. All the red part is covered. I can remove it. Okay, so I think we have uh, the, the screen. I will delete the align item center from the container just to make sure that the field will be on the top, but not align items, but justify content actually. Yes, they are on the top. And another problem that we see here is that this component goes under the notch uh, of the iPhone here and is covered. So to fix that, we're gonna use, instead of a view, we're gonna import the save area view. We're gonna take it here and replace, and replace the view with a safe area view. And now, everything inside this view will be rendered in the safe area of the display of the phone. So it's not going to be under the notch, it's not going to be under the button, like under this thing on the bottom. You cannot see it, uh, but yeah, it's there. Okay, we have the image. The next step, what is the next step? Players on the field. <clears throat> Players on the field. Let's open it here. First of all, let's define uh, an object that will hold, like temporarily will hold a list of players on our field. So our const uh, players Okay, players, it's gonna be an object and I want to structure them based on their position. So for example, uh, forward players will be this array, uh, then what do we have, mid, then, okay, mid is this one, then defenders is an array of players and goalkeeper, goal, how did I? Call it goalkeeper. I don't know why I named them like this, but I think that's how I did it. Okay, never mind. So these are the goalkeepers. Initially, we will not have any players because we don't have them selected. So I'm just gonna fill in with new values. Um, and for example, here we have three position, three empty positions. 
for mids as well and for defenders we're gonna have four like we're gonna have three three four formation and for goalkeeper is only one okay this is the list of um, attackers this is the list of midfielders and so on i think this is clear okay now we need to uh, render them on our screen on our field uh, okay that's gonna happen here mm. so we need to first of all loop through the player uh, to loop through each key and then to loop through each player in the key because each key is a row on the screen and yeah each one is a separate row like each group of players are a separate row and each player is a column in that row this is an, in a way a grid so we will have to loop two times the first time we're gonna loop through the keys of a player object to do that i'm gonna do object dot keys uh keys of a player players and then what do we want uh this will return us an array of uh keys in this case it's gonna be uh, like an array of forward mid uh, defender and goalkeeper this is the array that the, this will return so let's map through this array map uh, and for each position let's just render a simple text uh, a simple text saying position just to see what's going on there position we don't have a text mm. Yeah, I think we need to uh, wrap our text in uh, parentheses like this. And here on the top, I don't think that you uh, see it. We have three lines, forward, mid, defender, goalkeeper. I'm going to do that. Uh, I want to put them in the middle, but not in the middle, but OK, yeah. First of all, for this style, I'm going to do justify content center. Let's see. That's going to put them in the center here. And I want to horizontally align, align items. Items center. This is to align all the children items in the center. So here we have them. However, the justify content, I don't want them to be all in the center i want them to be spread throughout the, the field like here on the top then middle um, defenders and goalkeepers so instead of center i'm gonna do uh, space around save and this as you see has spread the rows apart forward mid defenders and goalkeeper hopefully that is uh, that was clear Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Now, here, <laughs> this is going to be um, a row of position, like forward there, four attackers. Now we need to loop through all the attackers and to display each of them on in this row. So instead of a text, I'm going to replace it with a view because this view will represent one row of players on the screen. And here, instead of just displaying the position, I want to loop through all the players on that position. To do that, I'm going to do players on the position that we have. We access it similar to uh, an array, even though it's an object. Objects, uh, yeah, uh, players, position, then here, 
this will return us, for example, this array. We will map, and here we will have a player. Player. Uh, and for each player, I don't know, let's return at the moment just the text player, right? Nothing more. So we have three player, player, player at the top, three player, player, player in the mid, four players as defenders and one in the, um, as a goalkeeper. Uh, all right, that's uh, already good, but we, we want them to be rendered in the same row, not in the same column. So for that, we're gonna add some styles to the row view. Just um, flex direction, we want to be a row. Save, players now are in the same row. And similar to here, like how we justify space around, I think that's how we need to do here as well. Just not to center them in the middle. Space around, save, um, space around. Probably it's a line items. Uh, no. Huh? Oh, <laughs> justify content, space between. No, it doesn't work. Uh, players, flex, row, align, align items. No, I think that, let me try to do a background color to see um, like the container. Yeah, the container does not uh, stretch to fit the whole screen. So for that reason, I'm gonna do with 100% to this row container and it will make sure that, the, yeah, like this, the row is stretched to the whole space and justify content, uh, let's do space around like this. And I can remove red and I see player, 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 player. Um, we see this background color white just because we are importing text from like custom components themed. So I'm just gonna uh, uh, copy it from here and import it directly from React Native. The same thing from for a view, just because uh, we don't need these custom theme components. We, we, we have like some uh, things for being uh, able to change the theme color like from dark to white, but we don't want to implement that now. So what do we have? We have all the players on the screen, everything is good. Um, I have here an uh, error saying that complaining about the types of uh, players because it cannot access it like this. To fix this problem, I need to uh, define the type of this player's object. And the type of this player's object will be, the, the key will be a string, right? Key will be a string. And the value will be an array of, uh, initially, let's say, null, right? Later on, we're gonna be able to have null or players inside here. Did this solve the issue? Yes, it did. Position a known word because I mistyped it. Position like this. Save. Okay, okay, okay. Now we, instead of rendering just text here, the text will be replaced with a position because yeah, that's what we are gonna display here, like mid, defender, goalkeeper. So instead of just player, I'm gonna replace it with position, save. Yes, that's already better. Um, and also we need to add some kind of an icon here to render the, um, the t-shirt. Uh, so we're gonna add the uh, icon here, uh, 
the icon will come from vector icons. I already prepared the icon. I found the icon that we need. However, if you want to uh, search a new icon, you can Google Expo. How is it? Icons.exp. Yeah, this one site. Icons.expo.fiy. And here, t shirt, for example. T shirt. And you see it here. Okay, I have it already there. Uh, let me render it on top of a text because we need the t shirt and then the text. The name of that icon is t shirt, is coming from Font Awesome like this. But as you see, um, yeah, Font Awesome, name t shirt, size 35, uh, color. Yeah, here I have some logic. If player is defined, I'm rendering it with a different color just to see if we selected a player there. And if player is not defined, we are rendering just with uh, a gray color here. Uh, we need to wrap these two components into another component because all components, like uh, we should map to a single component, not two components, but one single component that will have two childs. So here we need view, oh no like this like this like this save let's have a look what do we have there okay we already have something here that's good uh styles of this view style uh align item center right yes that's already better and for the text i'm gonna add some styles as well i want to add some background color so background color it's going to be also some kind of of this color but but a bit darker so probably two 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 what's that i don't know just guessing some colors uh i can do Free, 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 save. Yeah, that's that's already good. Uh, the text of the color itself, the, the color of the text itself, uh, I'm gonna do it with white, uh, font, weight, bold. Um, that's good. And I want to add some padding to this container because the, this box in which the text contains is like very small like doesn't give the text room to breathe so padding i'm gonna add two padding just to have it like this and i want to add more padding horizontally to have more space there because we have a lot of space horizontally not a lot of space vertically so padding horizontal i can add five or even seven eh, yeah something like that Probably I will decrease the font itself, font size a bit. It's too big. 16, no, 14. 12. Yeah, I think that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's good enough. That's good enough. Mm. Okay, so uh, let's think, let's think. Are we done here? What do we want to do? Um I'm thinking that we can extract some of the things, two separate components, just to make it a bit cleaner. So I'm going to create a separate component 
for the whole field that we have here. Um, so in the components, I'm gonna create a new file called field, right? TSX. The field here, React Native Function Component. I'm gonna generate the boilerplate for our component. Um, if you're interested how I did that, you can check out my <clears throat> VS Code setup video that I have on my channel. And here, uh, I will copy everything, including the image background, because that's everything related to our field. S save. I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna see what do we need there. We need the players, we need the field, we need the... Let's copy the, those here. From React Native, I'm gonna copy everything here. Okay. I'm gonna remove uh, the ones that we have there. What else do we need here? Uh, font was some, yeah, the icon itself, the icon from here. I'm gonna move it. Save. Uh, yeah, something like that. Now um, in our tab one screen, let's just render our field here. So I'm gonna import field from components field and we can simply render it here in our safe area view field yeah i need to, to import it with capital f save and we are back to normal however yeah our screen is this simple component which includes a field and then like the field itself, which is something very separate, like very, um, very specific. It's a, a custom component. From here, uh, I can also do, uh, I can also extract a, a singular player. I can extract this one from here in order to make it easier because we loop a lot of things. So usually in programming, whenever you have loops, it's a good practice to take the logic inside the loop into a function. And when you loop, you just call that function and all the logic is somewhere else. This way your code will be much more clean. So I'm gonna show you how to do it here. So in components, uh, I'm gonna create a new file, field player dot TSX, react native functional component field player and from the field I'm gonna copy everything that we have here in players dot map because this view renders one player on the map including the, the t-shirt and the text so I'm gonna copy that he from here and I'm gonna put it in the field player instead of a view so inside the return we will have to move around some <laughs> imports as well, like font awesome uh, and player and position. So player and position are things that we don't have here in this component, but we have in the field component. We have player and we have position here. So we need a way to send data uh, because Right now we will do field player to render a field player. Save. So right now we need a way to send data from our field from here inside field player regarding the player and the position. Uh, yeah, to send this data is pretty simple. So we are gonna do like player equal player and position equal position position uh, now let's go and see how we can receive this information 
how we can receive this information in our field player component. We're going to receive them inside our props variable here. And yeah, we can destructure them, like take out from the props, the player and the position, position equal props. So this name is the name that we are sending here, the property and this position is this position that we take out from the property. So right now, as you can see, we are back to normal. We are showing like the, the player, the positions and so on. Uh, I don't know, from here, instead of position, if I would say hello, all of them will say hello, because that's what we send, that's what property we send from here. Hopefully that's clear. Now let's speak about uh, TypeScript because we have some red arrow here. This is perfect JavaScript because we don't define any types uh, for our properties. However, uh, in order to help and to, to make sure that everyone who is gonna use this component will send a string as a position and a specific structure for the player, we can define a type like type uh, field player props. This type will include a player, which right now is null or something. Later on is gonna be null or player, right? Because it can be null or player. Right now we don't have yet the player field, so it's gonna be null and position position is gonna be of type, uh, I, I would say string, where is it, string, and it will work, so, and we should declare props is of type field player props, like this. And now a cool thing about this is whenever we use the field player, if we forget to send a, uh, a property, TypeScript will say, position is missing in type and required there. Or if we make a typo, which is very common in programming, this will, TypeScript will tell you what's the problem. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Equal here, yes. Okay, we have uh, the field player here, which displays just the t-shirt, the text with a position. In the field, we loop through uh, all the positions, we render like a row. We could extract this one as well, but I will not do it because it's quite small, like the logic inside this row. And for all the players, we render just a field player. Okay. Um, all right, let's move on. Let's move on. I'm gonna close field player, like everything except tab one screen, because we have some things to do here. One of that thing is we need to add a button, button at the bottom here. Uh, to do that, I'm gonna use a pressable component. A pressable component is similar to a view uh, that can register user uh, touches, user presses, user input. So it doesn't have any styles, we will style them ourselves and we'll need a text to display it. So let's do it here. So pressable. We'll have a text. The text will say, Pick players or view players, view players. Okay, so let's add some uh, on press is gonna call a function view players. The view players, we're gonna implement the logic a bit later. Let's just uh, create this empty function that we can console warn something 
to see if it's work if it if it is working save and if i press view players here i see a uh, view players warning that's what we are doing okay let's let's style uh, this button a bit style uh background color is gonna be some kind of an orange okay that's okay uh we've it's gonna be 100 percent 100 percent or just flex one nope nope uh One hundred percent. Let's do it like that. Margin uh, twenty. Margin doesn't work. Margin. Why doesn't work? Margin. If I do ninety percent mm -hmm. and margin, we don't need it because yeah uh, margin is going to be vertical Le let's leave the margin to make sure it will not touch the borders uh, we'll add also some padding to make the button taller uh, we will align the text in the center like this we will um, make the borders round using border radius of i don't know 50. this will make the uh, the button like rounded and i think that's okay for the button itself we can style a bit the text but do we need uh no it's okay i think it it's 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 good okay that's good with the button mm -hmm. You know what? Let's extract uh, the styles in this style um, object that we have in order to make our component cleaner. So button container container. I'm gonna copy everything from here. Oh come on! And style remove one pair of brackets because that was for our object and now we need to access styles dot button container save it's back here one more thing margin margin top auto will make sure that the button is always on the bottom as you see here okay all right uh what else what else what else do we need I think it's okay. Push notifications in React Native. Yeah, we're, we're gonna do that. Not in today's video, but we're gonna do that. Uh, okay, guys. So, I see a lot of people that are joining the live stream. So let me just give you a very brief introduction for you to understand what we are doing today. Um, and yeah, today we are building a clone for the, a fantasy application game uh, based on the UEFA uh, official application. We're gonna build this using React Native and Recoil, and this is gonna be a tutorial for these two technologies. And this is my goal actually for this, uh, for this video, to teach you React Native and to teach you, to give you an introduction and to teach you Recoil, which is a new global state management uh, library developed by Facebook. And I really, really enjoyed working with it. And I think that it's gonna be used a lot in future for, um, for big projects. Um, yeah, what else? So here are the screens that we uh, are trying to build. Uh, we're trying to build like this team screen where you will build the, the, the team. 
uh, you'll see a list of players from where you can choose and you'll be able to filter through, through that players. And everything is going to be done with, yeah, with Recoil to manage this data globally to be able to share it from uh, different components. Now we have finished to set up the React Native project and we have uh, also rendered this field screen with a field, with the image background, with the players on the field. Uh, yeah, now let's focus on the stat stats container, which is here on the top. It just shows like how many players and the budget itself. So that's what we're gonna do. For that, I'm gonna create a new uh, component. Uh, it's gonna be called, I don't know, uh, team stats.tsx. Let's do a React Native functional component, team stats. And I'm gonna add some text here, team stats, okay? Uh, back in our tab one screen, I'm gonna import this import team stats from components team stats, okay? And I'm gonna render it on top of a field, before the field team stats. Let's save and check our simulator. Yeah, we have them there at the top. Um, yeah, one more thing. If I want to render the background of the whole page the same as the, as the field, right? So here, container, if I do background color, let me find the exact color that we used there. Where are you? I'll be here in the morning. Here is the color. 72CC5E. Save. Yeah, this is good. It's not exactly the same color. I don't know why, but it's okay. You can find, you can, you can get the color better than me. All right, so team stats is on the top. Let's go there. We will want to render like a container, players remaining. Okay, some borders, all right. So players remaining. So first one is players. Here we'll have another text saying, I don't know, zero out of 15. Uh, another text for remaining for the budget. Text. We can say 100M. Uh, I don't have a euro sign on my keyboard, so I'm gonna use it like this. Mm, yeah, that's probably enough. So let's uh, let's define some styles. Uh, for the styles, let's do the const styles equal style sheet dot create and create a style sheet here. Let's not forget to import style sheet from React Native. And we're gonna have uh, for the container for the uh, label and for the value. The label will be players and remaining and the value will be the value itself. Here, container style equal styles dot container. Uh, here. I'm gonna paste all the styles here. Label for the players and remaining value for the values. And also I'll need to wrap the, the values into a separate view because I need to display them on top of each other. So I'm gonna do another view here, put the two values inside. 
and the same for the second one in view put everything inside save okay now it's good let's have a look at the simulator okay we have something um, I'm gonna start for the from the container uh, background color this is my <laughs> um, helper method to understand what's going on so white good with 100% or let's do 90% or something like that yeah that's good um, border width we will have free and border color will have some kind of of a blue i don't know i'll just write blue oh that's a bad blue what's this turquoise Tur how is it how do you write that color oh, no <laughs> that's bad <laughs> color picker uh, okay let's try happy friday thank you very much hello from nepal hello so how is that color oh something like this close yeah this one perfect emulator here uh, good enough i can do even five no four 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 and some border radius of five ten good uh, i want to display the items inside this container which are these two views in the same row for that reason i'm gonna do justify content row uh, what no not justify content but flex direction sorry flex direction row like this uh, and some padding 10 to give some space yeah yeah that's good i will probably need some styles for this view as well styles uh, value container value container just because i will want to add some um, margin right uh, 10 come on oh here i forgot a comma oh yeah that, that's okay that's okay uh for the values we're gonna increase the font size to i don't know 20 font weight to bold bold value container i'm gonna increase margin right to 20 just because these values are so big they need more space between them even 25 will be okay uh da, 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 da. Yep. Probably 18 will be enough. Mm -hmm. And for the label, I don't see anything that we need to, to change. I've only, we can adjust the color to have a 999. Mm, a bit darker, so it's gonna be a CCC. No, darker, 555. free 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 okay yeah that's that's better mm -hmm. yeah i'm um i'm okay with with these styles you can go and adjust them based on your needs um uh, but we need to move because we have a lot of things to do and we are almost one hour in and we still have some things to do for the UI and then get into the 
data management, state management. So how do you find these guys? Do you like, do you like it so far? Okay, um, fill screen is done. Let's uh, get going. And the next one is the player list. The player list, as you can see, um, is a container that comes from, uh, from the bottom of the screen. And this is accomplished using the bottom sheet. You can uh, check out the library here following this URL. It makes it uh, very easy to integrate like this kind of bottom sheets uh, in React Native, also like scrollables and so on. So without further ado, let's uh, get started with this and we will need to install it. I'm not gonna install version two. We're gonna install version three. Uh, so copy it, make sure that you have a version three at the end and let's run the command here. I'm gonna open a new terminal by the way and run the command yarn add to install this library. Then we can have a look at the examples. Uh, yeah, they, they have also some extra dependencies for React uh, Reanimated and Gesture Handler. However, we already have these libraries from that template that we started. That's why I wanted to start with this template. So if you have a look here, reanimated, yeah, we have it here and gesture handlers. So that's one, uh, one thing that we don't need to do, that it's already done. Let's have a look at the usage to see how it is used. So first things first, I'm gonna copy um, the rendering part of the bottom sheet here. So let's copy this, add it where? Uh, in the tab one screen here, or should we, or should we create a separate component for that? Not yet. If we will need it, we will do that a bit later. So we pasted that code, we see a lot of issues. So first thing we need to import bottom sheet from, uh, from the library, which, which is, yeah, here, import bottom sheet from Gorholm bottom sheet. Mm, okay. Then, uh, we need some, some extra steps like for the snap points, for the reference and so on. Uh, 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 okay, let's do it here. I'm not gonna copy, I will write it and explain uh, on the way. Um, okay, at the moment we don't need the refs actually. I'm gonna explain why do we need the refs, when we need the refs. Snap points, okay, this is something that we need. So snap points is an array, const is an array, of values of positions where we want the, our flat list to snap. So we want it at zero because we want it initially hide, hidden. Then we have, uh, we can either say like a 200 pixels or 500 pixels, or we can say relative uh, like at 50%. So it's zero or half of the screen. And we can also just for fun say 100%. To show you what I mean by that, uh, on change on, I think we don't need that right now. In uh, index one specifies at what index of the snap points it should initialize. So in this case, it's gonna be at 50%. Uh, we need a view from React Native because we don't have it. Let's import it and content container, let's add this tile like an empty, we'll see if we need it. Content container, yeah. Now that's everything that we need. Let's open, let's try to re reload our application. 
we might need to reinstall it because we no. So as you saw, our bottom sheet was initialized at the half of the screen because we said index one, meaning that take the snap position at index one, which is 50%. And also we can scroll up and it's gonna go to 100%. If we have here 90%, you'll see that 50, 90, 50, 90, and so on. Like depending on your needs, you can adjust like at what percentage your bottom sheet should snap. I don't need actually the third value. Like for me, 50% is okay and 0% because I want it to be closed. All right, so but the thing is that whenever the, the bottom sheet is closed, I need to press on the view players and it should open. To do that, I need a reference to that, um, to that component, to this bottom sheet, to be able to call a function on this. To, to get a, a reference, I'm gonna import the use ref hook from React, use ref. I'm gonna declare the, the reference on top of my component, const, uh, I don't know, players, um, bottom shit, so verbose, but okay. It's gonna be equal to use ref, and I'm gonna assign this the variable to our bottom sheet ref, like this. Now, whenever ref bottom sheet, uh, is it ref? Yeah, it's ref, but we need to um, define the type of this reference. So the type of this reference is gonna be bottom shit. Yeah, this is the type, this is the type we want to store here. That's good. Uh, okay, initially we can say it's null. That's better? Yeah, that's better. Now we have a reference to this component and having this reference in our view players method where we call it whenever we press on the button, we can say players bottom shit dot current dot uh, expand. And this will expand uh, our bottom shit to the maximum height, in this case 50%. Let's save, let's close our bottom sheet. Actually, I'm gonna do index zero here because I want to, to open our application with the bottom sheet closed. Whenever we place on the view players, we see the bottom sheet, we close it, we press, we see it. Yeah, that's everything that we need to do uh, to make this bottom sheet work. What is the difference between recoil uh, and redux? The main difference is um, the, I would say the, the most important difference is the learning curve because recoil is a lot easier to learn compared to redux. Uh, but actually the main difference is recoil was built specifically uh, for React and React Native applications by the React uh, team, by the team that is behind this. And by doing that, the API is, is integrating very, very well into React and React Native applications. Uh, you'll see that it's almost the same as working with local state. It's super simple and also um, it is much more optimal than Redux. Uh, because of the way uh, your components are re-rendering in result of some changes. Um, in small applications, that's not gonna be uh, noticeable, but in very large application, it is said that uh, recoil is much more optimal than Redux. Okay. Moving forward, we need to uh, render team uh, players here. We need to render players here. So first things first, let's declare a component that will render one player. 
having that component that, that can render one player, we can duplicate that component and render a lot of players. Easy? Easy. Let's do that. So in components, I'm gonna create a new file. That's gonna be called player list item. And let's not forget to do dot tsx. React native functional uh, React native functional component. Uh, come on, React native. This one. Okay, this is gonna be a player, right? Player. Mm -hmm. Player. So here, instead of rendering the text, awesome. I'm gonna render a player just to be able to see it. Player list item just to be able to see it. And yeah, I see it already there. And to be able to develop from there. Okay, player list item. So what will we have? We will have an image. Uh, basically we will have what? Four columns. First one, the image. Second one, name and team. Third one, uh, value and position. And the last one, points okay let's do that so we have first thing first column in our case is an image image we're gonna add the source and everything in a moment then we have a group of things a view of two text first one is i don't know the name that's how you spell his name, I guess, I hope. And I don't know, like two teams, some random the teams. Then we have another group of two texts where the first one is the value. No, let's say 1.1M. The second one is position. Let's say mid. The last one is his points. And we don't need a separate view because it's just one thing. Text, points, no, 29. Save. Let's import the image because React is going crazy view players okay we we have something here now let's add some styles i'll define the styles here is equal to style shade dot create let's import it from react native and what will we have we will have a container uh that will be like this view everything then we'll have an uh, image and then we will have what mm. yeah for the name we will need it or should we just have yeah name uh and something for the points it's gonna be a bit bigger okay let's add the, the style store components style style dot container okay for the image styles styles dot image i'm gonna copy paste make it a bit faster this is gonna be name uh, the price is gonna have a similar styles as the name just bold and, and that's it not styles but style and this is for the points Okay, 
Now let's think, let's look and let's develop. Okay, I'll start with a container because first of all, we want everything into the same row. Flex direction row. Easy. Then we want full width. Width 100%. Okay. Um, then we want our components to be spread apart, like to take the whole space horizontally. So justify content space between. Good. Uh, the first one is the image and then everything else. Mm. Then we want we want uh, some padding. Ten probably no ten is too much. Five. Ah okay. And align items align items center just to make them. The points uh, vertically are aligned. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. The image. We're gonna come back later to to style the image when we'll have actual data. Now for the name, I want font weight bold. And what else? I don't know. To increase a bit the font for the points as well, it's bold. And also font size for the points 18. Mm, okay. What else did we have there? Mm, yeah, as you see, that. Uh, the um, the points and the, um, the price are close together. To do that, I'm gonna say that this container that contains the name should stretch to fit the whole uh, empty space and to leave just space for, for the other components. So I'm gonna do that for where? Here, where is the names? Style equal. Um, flex. Uh, I think it's flex grow one. You need to grow flex. What's going on there? Cannot be converted. What? Yes, flex grow. And that means that this component took everything and left like only a bit of space for others. Only enough space for others to render and the, the empty space is taken by the, this container. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna add some, some margins to these containers um, because now they are too close together. So social distancing st styles, uh, call container, let's say. So margin horizontal, uh, five enough. Come on. No, it's not enough, 10. Yeah, that's, that's probably better. Here for the call container. Mm -hmm. Specifically for this, like where we have a mid, I want to align the items to the right because that's how it is here. Like you see the forward is aligned to the right. Probably I'm spending a lot of time <laughs> for, for these things. So I'm gonna do flex, justify content and flex and let's have a look. No, it doesn't want. Mm. 
Come on. Come on. You can do it. Flex. Start. And if I do flex end, will you work? Or align items? Yes, align items. That's good. What else do we need here? Some more margin horizontal, 15. Mm -hmm. mm. Or should we do padding? Padding. Nothing changed. Okay, okay, okay. I think that it's good enough. We can come, uh, come back later to, to adjust some styles here. Mm. Also, like the container should have like a border at the bottom to, to be able to separate between two rows. So I'm gonna do border bottom width two and border color like a very light gray like light gray will it work yeah the width should be one that's much better but i want even lighter so 999 aaa uh, ddd save mm, that's good eee -E. That's better. Perfect. Padding 10. How about 10? Okay. <laughs> okay, so we have a container here for uh, styling one player in the list. But the problem right now is that everything is hard coded, like the price, the name, the image, and so on. We need to get this information from props. So we will receive a player from the props and we need to define the props here. So props, import props, not import props, but type or interface. Props is equal to player Uh, player will be of type player but now we need to define like what type this player should be let's open a file called type types.tsx which you can find in the root folder and here let's do export type player and the player what will the player have it will definitely have an id string it will have a name string. It will have a image. Mm, I'm gonna show you uh, why we don't need an image. It's gonna be a little hack. Um, yeah, like what is gonna be part of a match. So what match string uh, price. This is gonna be a number. Uh, position, position, position will be, we can say string, but as I said before, um, let's define very exact like positions. Like we will define an enum positions, which is gonna be equal to, is it like this? Um, so forward, mid, uh, defense, goalkeeper, and the position will be of this enum. What else? What else? Do we have? Let's check in the data players dodges yes we have a list of players i have prepared it for you guys it has like id name match 
price, position and total points. And total points, which is also a number. Name, okay. Probably that's it. So going back to the player list item, we can say that the player is of type player. We need to import this type. I'm gonna press uh, control dot or command dot if you're on Mac, import player from types. Okay, what can we do now? We can say the player, instead of a name, this hard coded name, we're gonna display player dot player dot name uh, here player dot match where here uh, player dot price but we're gonna need to do something with the price there and here player dot position and last thing player dot total points save uh, the thing the problem is that way, where we are using right now the player list item which is in tab one screen we are not sending any player and it even says like property player is missing um, let's import the players that I defined here let's import them in our tab one screen so in tab one screen I'm gonna do import players from assets data uh, players players and I'm gonna send here to the player list item the player is equal to players at position zero like give me the first player uh, this means let's try to check come on reload undefined players what's going on export cons players okay we either have to destructure players from there yeah, let's destructure them because we export it as a constant. So save. I don't know what's going on here. Let's try to reload. Come on, what's going on? I want to, to what? Reload. Did you forget the... No, I didn't forget anything. If I just remove everything, will you work? Mm, okay, now it worked. Just removed and added it back and everything is fixed. So we see it works. And if I change from zero to one, I'm going to see a different name, a different price, a different everything. That's good. So first things first, uh, for the player.price, let's uh, display it, like let's divide it by, let's divide it by 1 million, zero, zero, zero. This is a little trick that instead of writing these numbers, which when you look at them, you don't understand, is it 100,000 or is it a million, is it 10 millions? You can actually add these underscores, which just visually represents the number. And yeah, this is a new feature in, feature in JavaScript. We're gonna divide by 1 million and we're gonna do what? I'm gonna put them here and say two fixed, uh one like only one digit after zero we need otherwise it's going to be a very long number okay now it's rendered here good now with the image mm, 
Yeah, one interesting part is there is a URL that I found that uh, from the API that we're gonna use later. And just knowing the ID of uh, the player, we can get the, the, the image. So let me just grab the URL. Where is it? Come on. Image, where are you? I'll be here in the moon. Here it is. I have it. So the URL is the following. Uh, I know that it's, you, you cannot see it. So for example, if it's zero, it's this player. If it's one, it's this player and so on. Like just by knowing the idea of a player, we can get his uh, picture. That's helpful because we, we know the idea of a player here. We know this URL. And I can say source is URI. This is the URI. Save. So I'm gonna display anything. However, if I, instead here of one, I will add, I'll transform this string to the template string using these backticks uh, to be able to insert here a variable. And variable here will be player.id. This is a variable, okay. I need just to style a bit this image. Um, with 35, height 35, border radius uh, 20 to make the image round. Um, I can do 50 or 40. Yeah, that's good. I can also add some border, uh, border, border with uh, one and border color AAA. Uh, because I think that's how it looks here, like a very subtle border radius. I think it's two and and let's have a look simulator view players. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Uh, just some let's say margin right ten to give some space to the, the name. Is it close to this? Mm, I think it's, it's good enough. As I said, you can always improve the styles. That's not what I'm trying to do, not pixel perfect, just to, to give you an idea like how, how to do it. Best way to learn React Native this way, building, building projects. Uh, all right, so I think we have everything ready for the player list item. We are rendering a player list item. We receive it through props. We do all of these things. Now, how... Uh, String is not assignable to position. Mm. And the players, yeah, here I think, never mind, never mind. It's not a big issue. Okay, so the, the question is, we know how to render one uh, list item. How do we render a lot of list items, like a list of, of uh, players? So um, in a normal context, context uh, we do that using a flat list, a flat list. But because we are rendering this flat list inside the bottom sheet, we're gonna import an extension of a flat list, which is coming from this bottom sheet called 
bottom sheet flat list like this bottom sheet flat list it's basically the same from the api standpoint like how we as developer developers use it but it's behind the scenes it opt it is optimized to be able to to be scrollable inside this bottom sheet uh, just not to mess around with the scrolls because this bottom sheet is also scrollable and the list should also be scrollable so something's going on there okay so inside this view i'm gonna render this bottom sheet flat list like this come on and it needs two properties first of all it needs data and the data will be the array that we want to display in our case it's going to be players and also it needs a render item which is a, which should be a function specifying how should the list render each individual items from this array so we're gonna grab the item that it tries to render at that moment and for each item i'm gonna render a player list item like this but instead of saying players here i'm gonna send the item that it tries to render save let's view players and nothing is here nothing is here because i don't know why data players render item bottom sheet flat list players mm? hello hello i'm gonna try to reload it reload Oh, I don't know why I have these issues. I need just to change something and it will work. So save. Now it should work and I'm going to go back. And I'm going to go back to this thing. Hello. Come on. Did you forget? No, I didn't forget. I don't know what's happening there. Let's try to, 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 to run on iOS simulator again. Close it and see. Okay, we we are almost there with the UI part. So it took us just a little bit longer than we expected. But the good thing is that we are almost there. Oh, this issue. Let me try just to re restart the server. So stopping the server and run yarn start again. It opened it here. Let's go. Uh, run on iOS simulator. Return. I don't return. But where is that? <coughs> oh, I need to put it in the huh, brackets. Yes, that might be the issue. Still something is missing. Yeah, like I, I don't close this one. Oh, my bad. I had some typos. Mm, was it like this before? Reload. Come on. Let's go. Cannot be converted. Why do I have this error today?
look style container with style container with that's for playlist item oh thank you oh my god <laughs> i would spend so much time trying to understand what's going on there so view players nothing is happening here as well uh, this might be because of um, the view that it is inside i don't know let's save and now we see them we see a list of all the players that we defined in our dummy data view players here they are okay i'll be glad if you post the link the link for hi i just started learning react native are there uh, any good and free resources you can recommend me hey guys what do we say to people that are looking for free and good resources to learn react native yeah take it from here guys <laughs> check out on the channel we have built so many applications from scratch and these are tutorials where i explain all the steps that we are doing and in my opinion this is the best way to to learn react native and there are a lot of people uh, that said that we didn't have any experience with react native and uh, with the help of my tutorials they managed to build a fully functional app so have a look okay uh what do we the problem is in view yeah the problem was in the view uh was in the styles of a view just because yeah it was not expanding it was hidden in a way so player list we have bottom sheet done player list item component done list of players done the last thing from this step is gonna be the the filter filter by position right nothing good is free uh, i don't know i did not answer your question yeah the, my answer is take the resources that uh, you can find on my channel that are free and that you can get started with react native uh, all right so let's um <laughs> take it from david david knows what he's talking about mm, yeah the next step is going to be the filters um the filtering the filtering ui so for that i'm going to define a new bottom sheet you know uh, yeah let's define it here bottom the reference i'm gonna create a new one so it's gonna be filters uh, index at zero probably zero is default and snap points equal snap points okay and here let's just display text filters save um, yeah let's define the reference here const all right so we have this one here mm. what do we need to do we need to uh, in our first bottom sheet here where we display the players we need to add a button uh, da, 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 da. i'm gonna copy the, <laughs> the button from here i'm gonna add it here and the button will say filters save I i'm gonna change the one press yeah because it should be something different filters okay uh on press open filters or i can define the the logic right here so arrow function and the logic should be uh the reference to the filters bottom sheet dot 
current dot expand because we want to open it. So if I press filters, it's gonna open the filters. I'm gonna close the filters. I'm gonna see, still see my players. Filters, come back and so on. Okay, so uh, in the filters here, mm -hmm. in the filters here, should I extract them to a separate component? Let's do that because we are going to have some logic there and it's going to be easier for us to understand, like not to, to mess around with everything. So in components new file, filters.tsx, simple uh, React Native functional component, export filters. Okay, we are going to have um, a view. First of all, let's, let's display the filters in our tab one screen instead of text filters i'm gonna add here filters from the components make sure that it is imported correctly so we have filters we go here and if i open the filters i have an empty space where i can add the filters so i'm gonna add here like filters based on the positions so it's gonna be Four positions, forward, mid, defender, goalkeeper, um, like this. I'm gonna create the styles, cons, styles, style, shit dot create. So let's create the style shit for this component. Let's import it from React Native. And we're going to have styles for the container. Um, container. We're going to have styles for the. Um, yeah, text probably. So, view style text, styles.text, styles.text. Uh, no, container here, container. And for the texts, text, we're going to have it like this. Come on. Oh my God. Save. So for the container, we want to display them in the same row. Flex direction row. Save uh, with 100% and justify content space between and also some padding. Perfect. Now for the text, for the text, we're going to have, first of all, some background color but the background color. Okay, never mind. It's gonna be a very light gray. DDD. It's okay. We're gonna add some paddings. Or or should we just add with 50? Height 50 and border radius to make them circles. Border radius. 25 border radius doesn't work on a text right border radius doesn't work on a text so we're gonna have to put the text inside the view text okay i'm gonna have to refactor some one two three one two and hopefully yeah and if i save all of them are okay 
Now I can add styles styles dot filter container to the view in order to be able to filter container there container. Yeah, so let's add the background color on the container itself, not on the no, actually everything is gonna be there. Uh, background color filter container. I mistyped it definitely. Okay. Um, align item center. Justify content center. Justify content center to display them in the middle. Like this. Uh, and for the text, I can do, I don't know, font weight bold. Bold. Uh, actually, I don't need font weight bold. It's okay like that. Yeah, I, I'm okay with that. Where is it? Simulators. With the filters and we go back. Yeah, filters, we go back. Okay, so I think with that said, we have we have all the UI that we need so that we can get into the interesting part, the part that has, I'm so excited about, which is the global state management with recoil. Before that, let me commit everything. Let's say UI. And I will also, you know what? Mm. I'm gonna move everything to a separate branch. Git checkout minus B UI. Uh, just because I will push this URL of this branch in the comments uh, below. So if you're interested only a recoil, you can um, clone everything from this branch and have the UI ready and implement only the, um, the recoil part. So switch to a new branch, git status. Yes, and everything is gonna be here. And now I can check out back to main and implement in the main everything related to recoil, but we are still gonna have a UI branch. That later on I'm gonna push to, to GitHub and I'm gonna publish a URL for that. Or should I do that now? Is anyone following along or uh, does anyone want to follow along live with me and wants the, um, the UI to clone the UI and to continue with the recoil? Or will you do that uh, later in the weekend? So let's have a look at the chat a bit and then we can continue. Thanks for introducing recoil. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. Uh, I have been thinking to try it for long. Yeah, the same. I heard about recoil uh, a couple of months ago and I always wanted to give it a try because by reading about it, you think like, oh, oh my God, like it's, it's the perfect thing because it's very easy to get started. It's much more optimal than uh, existing solutions like uh, Redux, but it's still in experimental phase. And so, uh, I'll start my uh, internship for React Dev position in one week. I'm very nervous because my CSS and HTML skills sucks. What do you think a junior dev should know? Basically, if you are in React Native, um, oh no, React, React Dev. Okay, in React, you would need some HTML and CSS, but it really depends on what, you, what you're gonna be focusing on, like rendering UI or uh, managing the logic. 
uh, yeah but i'm pretty sure that if it's an internship position you're not expected to know a lot you're only expected to to learn fast and be uh, enthusiastic about uh, the technology that you're gonna use at the internship so just yeah be open-minded be ready to to learn and ask a lot of questions uh i see it's a good idea to push the ui now yeah let, let's do that because it's not gonna take us a lot it's two minutes so why not uh because yeah let's do it right now i'm gonna create a new repository uh how should i call <laughs> i'm lost between we have uh, and uh euro like like this i'm gonna add it later i want an empty repository so let me add it here and let's push it also i'm gonna check out to our ui branch and push origin ui so we have both the main that i'm gonna update soon and the ui branch so now if you go to this url that i'm gonna paste in here you will see the main and also the ui branch both of them are here All right. Okay, uh, give me one minute. Uh, I'm going to be back and we're going to start with recoil. Let's go. All right, guys, <laughs> encourage everyone to do so. I'll give you a star. Thank you very much. Are you going to use Amplify as a backend? To be honest, I didn't, I haven't planned yet what we're going to do in future with, with this application, because so far I really wanted to focus on teaching you recoil. That's very exciting for me. I don't know why. So, but in future, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Recoil is new for me and everyone. Yes, I know that Recoil is new for a lot of people. Uh, so that's why I'm gonna try to explain a bit of theory, but you know that I don't like a lot of theory i i um, i think that it's better to show you by example how to use it but nonetheless let's speak about uh just shortly what is recoil and how it will help us um with our react native applications uh so yeah let's get started uh all right recoil as i said is a state management library uh, for react and react native applications it is developed by Facebook, which uh, by the Facebook team, which is also behind uh, React uh, Native and React. And that means that it was specifically developed for React and 
uh, that gave it a lot of advantages and the integration in, in React ecosystem is very, very easy and very native. Like when you work with Recoil, you don't need to, to have some different concepts in mind, like uh, uh, because in case of Redux, whenever you learn Redux, like your whole uh, mindset should, should switch from uh, React to uh, Redux and there are a lot of things going on there that you need to, to understand. Like the learning curve for Redux is, uh, is very steep. Uh, that's why Recoil came here to, to make things easier, specifically for React applications. So uh, yeah, it's boiler free, free API, boilerplate free API. You don't have to write all of this boilerplate that usually we do with Redux, like actions, reducers, and so on, just to manage a counter, for example. Um, yeah, it has a very simple get and set interface, and it is very similar to the React local state, the state that we use uh, using the hook use state, um, and it has two main building blocks, atoms, atoms and selectors. So uh, what are these atoms and selectors? Let's have a look. Uh, atoms, these are the, the, uni, the actual unit of state. These are the, the data that we want to manage in state. These are, yeah, they are updatable and subscribable. Uh, very funny word, subscribable. But what that means is that, um, yeah, components can subscribe to updates of, a, of an atom, like of a piece of state. And whenever that piece of state updates, our components will automatically re-render. Uh, yeah, that basically what it means. To declare an atom, we uh, use the atom function. It needs a key which should be unique throughout the whole project and it is used for optimization, debugging and so on. And it needs a default value uh, for that piece of state. In this case, uh, for example, we declare a, a state, a share, a share state like an atom for the font size and the default one, the default font size is 14. Okay, but how do we access it? We access it using uh, use recoil state function. Uh, let me, I don't have my, mm -hmm. yeah, that thing that I can highlight where I'm talking about. Um, yeah, no, but let me open it just to show you where, what I'm referring to. I don't know, screen brush here. Come on. Come on. What the? Okay. Okay. Yes. I'm speaking about this line. It was worth it for this, just to show you where it is. So as I was saying, uh, we, to, to use a um, recoil state, uh, like an atom, we use the hook use recoil state. We give the atom there, which is this one. And yeah, we receive the same thing as we receive from a use state hook. We receive a value here and we'll receive a setter here. With this function, we are able to update the value in state. By doing this, as you see, like in a component, when we consume it, it's similar to a use state hook. But in this case, we can share this with um, multiple components. And whenever we update the, the font size in this state, all the components that use it, they will be re-rendered. They will be notified and re-rendered. It's gonna be much uh, um, more clear when we actually use them. So let's move forward to the next piece, the, the next building block of Recoil. Uh, let me check if there are any questions regarding this. Uh, no questions. I hope that it's clear. That's similar to Mobax. Someone is saying. Subscriptions remind me of uh, RxJS. 
Okay, so selector. Selector is the next building block uh, for recoil. Um, in simple words, they are uh, functions which will modify a state value or another selector value. So with them, like we are able to calculate derived data. Uh, come on. We are able to calculate derived data. So for example, in state, we, for our application, we will have a list of players. This is our state because it's the whole list of players. But when we will filter, the filtered list of players is going to be a selector, a derived data. We will take the data from the, all the players and we will return only the ones that uh, match the criteria of a filter. So this way we derived this data. So that's, um, that's why we need these selectors to be able to have as little uh, state as possible and to have like just functions that present the value from the state in a way that we need. For example, in one view, we need uh, to display only mid filters. We can have a selector that will filter all the players from our state. They will filter uh, only the mid filters and it will return it. In our screen, we might need, I don't know, only players that, uh, that are in your team or only players that are not in your team. So all this logic can be uh, designed using selectors. Uh, and yeah, as, uh, selectors and atoms have the same interface. And for this reason, they can be uh, replaced with, one, uh, with each other. So you can subscribe to a selector or you can subscribe to an atom in your components. We're gonna do that everything to, uh, together. So for the selector, uh, how we de define a selector, here it is. Uh, we define it using the selector function. It also has a key similar to an atom, atom, but instead of a default value, it has a getter. The getter is the function that is gonna be run when we try to access the value of this selector. And in this case, we want to uh, we want to define a selector that will take the font size and will add the unit, for example, 14 pixels. Um, so, first of all, we read the, the value from state of the font size, which we declared in the previous slide. Uh, yeah, font size state, we declared it here in the previous slide. Font size state. We take it from there, we append the pixels and we return it. And that's it, this is a selector, it depends on, the, on the, that atom. And whenever the font size state will change, our selector will be re-executed. So that's how we nest the data. Okay, that's it with the theory. I already want to puke about so much theory. Uh, I don't like it. Let's get <laughs> our hands dirty and actually try things out and learn by doing. That's the best way to, to learn and the most fun way to learn. So, uh, do you use Recoil at Vitinium? No, I don't use Recoil at Vitinium. I use uh, Apollo GraphQL because we are working with a GraphQL database. So that's a, a bit a different, a different situation. Uh, Vadim, how do I contact you for a project? You can contact me on uh, Discord, LinkedIn, email. You can find everything in the description. <laughs> All right, so let, let, let's get started with, with Recoil. First thing, we will install Recoil using yarn add Recoil or npm install Recoil if you're using npm, sorry. Okay, here we have it. Let's open. I'm gonna move back from the UI branch because I want to leave the UI as it is right now so you could use it main okay so i'm gonna add it here recoil let me close everything to start clean okay Uh, 
waiting for it to install. Uh, yeah, everything is installed. Now, uh, the only thing that we need to do, I mean, the next step we need to do is to wrap our whole application into a recoil root. This is yeah similar to Redux or other providers like the context and so on. So we're gonna import a component uh, from recoil, recoil. And the component is going to be called uh, recoil root. Okay, let's wrap. Uh, I don't think that we need that, like the status bar and the safe area provider inside the recoil root. So for that reason, I'm just gonna uh, recoil root tab one screen or in if you have navigation you put the navigation here inside the recoil root okay with that all our like descendant child all our components inside this recoil root will be able to access uh, recoil state so let's define this recoil state and for that i'm gonna create a separate folder like atoms and a new file here for the um, what players dot ts okay so i want i want to define the first piece of global state all the players that we have in this list so i'm gonna export const uh, all player players state is going to be equal to an atom let's import atom from recoil and it needs as i said a key uh, the key is all player state and a default value the default value I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's an empty array at the moment and soon I'm gonna replace it okay now let's open uh, what screens and not screens components right because we have screens tab one screen and where we have here bottom sheet flat list uh, let, 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 let's take this thing out of here, like the bottom sheet flat list, uh, into a separate component, just to have like the state and everything close together to, to be easier to understand like what, what's going on, because here like it's a lot of things. So I'm gonna create in components new one here. So players uh, list, players list. React Native. Come on, React Native. Oh, I need dot TS, TSX, TSX. React Native functional component. Come on, let's do it. And from our tab one screen, I'm gonna copy only the bottom sheet flat list from here. I'm gonna put it in the flat list here save i need to import it of course uh, for the players let's make put an empty array at the moment just to to finish the refactoring and then we are gonna update it let's import the player list item and going back to the tab one screen here let's render the player list players list this is an important step to be able to to see it actually so here we have yeah like with the, the button with filters and then the player players list it's empty at the moment that's okay uh from this tab one screen i think i will remove a couple of things for example players we don't need it player list item we don't need it anymore 
and yeah enough so back to the players list now this component should read the state from our uh, global state from recoil atom how to do that we need to import uh, a couple of things first one from recoil import recoil recoil a hook for the use recoil recoil state this one use recoil state then we need to import the atom itself to know like which recoil which atom are we trying to access so i'm gonna import players uh how is it called all player state yes from atoms and here players save so okay we have them now in our player list component here the same way as we were um, defining a local state here is the value like players here is the setter set players is equal to use player state uh, and which state all player state this one save use recoil state sorry use recoil state save and now we can set, send the players here to our bottom sheet if I open it, it's still empty, but just because we, we set it to default an empty thing. So instead of empty array here, let's import our dummy data at the moment, because later on we're gonna fetch an API. But I want to, I want to build step by step to there to understand every step that we're doing. So I'm gonna import players from our dummy data, and I'm gonna set it as the default value. So assets data players and instead of this array i'm going to set it to this array and as you see we already have our players which are coming from the dummy data they are set in our recoil state and then we display them here i don't know we can i can show you but we also can edit these players like using this setter uh, I don't know. I can say I'll define like a use <laughs> just to show that it's working. It's very dumb. Use not use but uh, set interval. I'll do I'll do something like after five seconds right and after five seconds i want to set players to an empty array basically i'll remove all the players after five seconds if i open it here come on come on view players doesn't want to do because i did it here which is not very good mm, let me try to restart reload oh this should be a function that is gonna do that. Yes. This is very dumb. Like I, I just want to show you that set players will update the state uh, with an empty array, uh, and we're gonna see that it automatically updates in our flat list. And it's gonna happen just after five seconds because I set it to an interval. And probably. I wanted an easy way, like a very hacky way to show you that it works. But it's not going to work. Mm. 
view players one two three five you saw uh basically yeah we are able to update that value very similar to how we would have i don't know a local state so local state will be local players set local players is equal to use state and here like the, the default value yeah from the api standpoint it there is no difference like how we use the, the local state and the recoil state there are a couple of things so uh, in this case we actually don't need to set any players they're gonna come uh, from the api we're gonna render and in this component we don't need to set them we can delete it now um, Use recoil state will return an array with two um, fields. The first one is the value, the second one is the setter. If we need only one of them, like if we need only the value or only the setter, we can do that. Uh, we can do that by using not use recoil state, but use recoil value. So these two calls are going to be exactly similar use recoil recoil value all players state this will return just one value of that state and that's why we don't need to destructure it from there i'm gonna comment that out just to show you that it works and i hope that it works okay let's have a look view players they're here as you can see not sure what happened with our filtered button but that's another problem so yeah if you need only the value you can get them using user coil value or by user recoil state and destructure it, uh, destructure the first one it's up to you but i think this is easier uh, the same thing you can do if you want only to update a value is set players equal use set recoil state all player state so these are very similar things this you'd use this if you need both of them you you'd use this when you need only the value and the setter only when you need the setter okay uh, i can actually leave it here just for you to to see it because it's possible okay now let's move to the filters there we will have some updates and you'll understand not only consuming the state but also updating the state okay i don't know what's happening with that button but i can go to Pressable. Uh, what's happening? To be honest, I don't care that much because <laughs> it doesn't look good. Pressable style button container. Uh, I'm gonna add some styles here for, I don't know. margin top 25 what's gonna happen yes but what's up with the text what's up with the text react native text hmm? come on yeah now now it works okay so we have probably 10 is gonna be enough all right filters so let's let's work with the filters um okay for that we are gonna need to keep track of what filters are currently selected we're gonna use an atom for that uh let me check a question uh, do i understand correctly that we should fetch data to recoil state and avoid using use route to pass data between screens 
use route. Mm. Yes, you. Mm, I'm, I'm not sure like how the, the two parts of the questions relate to each other. Uh, but yeah, like you will fetch the data from your API using recoil. You'll put it into the global state. And when you, you're gonna move through the screens, you're just gonna consume the same state without passing the, the actual like the data between screens or like without passing like whole objects, you'll still pass, I don't know, IDs. For example, when you press on a post, you'll send like the post ID, which is just a string. And based on that, you'll take it from state. Yes, I, now I understand your questions and it is true. Uh, you're not gonna send the whole object, like the whole post object or the whole player object. You're gonna send ID and then take it from state. Uh, okay, let's move on, filters. Uh, so as I was saying, we need for the players, for the all players, in order to filter them, we will need an extra atom. I'm gonna add it into the same file just to keep them close together. Later on, we can refactor and move them to separate file. So um, let's say it's gonna be called position filter state is going to be a new atom the key I'm going to set this one and the default by default it's going to be an empty array because no position are uh, selected right okay now let's go to our filters filters.tsx yeah this is why we extracted them into different components to be able to work with them separately with their state. Now we will need the very coil state. So I'm gonna use recoil state. And in this case, we need both the setter and the getter. That's why we need the recoil state from recoil. And let's import uh, from atoms players we're going to import the position filter state this one now let's get the the position filter and set position filter this is going to be use recoil state and we're going to Pass the the atom that we import from here. Position filter. Come on, copy, copy, copy. Is everything good with my stream? Mm, yeah, excellent connection. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, let me copy it from here. Position filter position set position filter all right okay look what we're gonna do uh, first of all i will console log position filter just for you to see what's going on we have it here uh, let, let's press on the iPhone 12 or on the device emulate, device or emulator name that you are running on. And yes, I'm gonna go into view players, view filters. And here, yeah, I already, I already saw the, the thing that I wanted to show you and I cleared it. So array, empty array. Initially, it's empty array because that's the default value in our state here for the position filters. Now, let's, let's define a function here, const on filter press. It's gonna be a function where we will receive a position, like on which filter did we press. It's gonna be a string and I'm gonna just console warn 
position. Now, this, this function I will at attach to the on press of each field, individual filters. For that, I need to swap the view with a pressable. So let me import the pressable to be able to add the on press. First of all, each view four in total will become pressables. Uh, and on press is going to be a function that is going to be called on filter press and we're going to send the value in this case forward right why do i <laughs> keep forward let's do the same here here and here this one is going to be mid def and goalkeeper actually to simplify all of this i'm going to do in a moment so here let me just press forward i see it here forward mid mid def def goalkeeper goalkeeper okay but as you see, we repeat a lot of code. Like all of these parts are repeated code. To do the, to, um, to fix this issue, let me just define an array of positions. Uh, positions. This is forward, mid, defender, and goalkeeper. Then here in the, our view, I'm gonna loop through all of them. Actually, I'm gonna map through all of them. And for each position, I'm gonna render a component that we have here in order not to repeat ourselves. So instead of forward here, I'm gonna render the position that we are looping. And for the filters as well, we are going to send position. Now we can remove all the pressables that we have. And we are left with a very small component, which has the same logic and forward, mid, defender, goalkeeper. All right. We get the one press events. Now let's update our global state and set the new position in the filters there. So let's just do set position filter. And similar to the state here, you can either um, give a value directly, in this case, like an array with the position, or we can do an update state. And with an update state, we give a function that will receive the existing filter current uh, position filter and here we return a new updated uh, value based on the existing value so what do we want to do we want to return the same array the same array we destructure everything from the current filters, like everything that is already in the state, we keep it there, but at the end we add just the, the new value position. Uh, let's save, let's view players, filters, let's check our console here, and if I uh, play, press on the forward, I see an array with forward, mid, forward, and mid, because we uh, we update with everything that is already in the state plus the position that we want to add. So forward, mid, defender, and goalkeeper. Okay, this is good. Um, we are able to add things to the state whenever we press on uh, these buttons. First of all, let's have a look here with the strings and never. Uh, this is because in our players.ts, we need to save it. This should be an array of string. Save, 
filter it should be yes it, it's fixed okay now based on the things that we have in array that you saw there like me defenders and so on let's highlight the button so basically if the button exists in the state it means that it is selected it means that we need to highlight it so for the pressable for the style here i'm gonna add like the styles that exist and also a separate style for the background color filter container let's copy it from here uh, background color is this one and i will have a I'll have a, uh, I'll calculate a variable here, come on, uh, which will indicate if the, if a filter is selected, but uh, I can do it as a function is selected. We will send a position and we will check if our array of filters, if our array of filters include includes the position that we want to check so if it's there it will return true if it's not there it will return false save and let's do the, the check here when we want to set the background basically we will call if it's selected the position that we want to to check now if that is selected we want some a different color uh i don't know purple so if a position that we are displaying is selected we display it with purple background otherwise with gray background let's check if it works we press the background is purple we press purple and so on however if i press it one more time it does not deselect and if i check the calls uh, the array here a lot of things going on if i press one more time it uh, i don't i don't console any longer yeah i removed the issue will be that every time that we press on a button we just add the thing to the array so we will end up with an array with three or four or five or as many times as we press on the mid this mid value will be in the array what should we do first of all we should check if the value is already in array we want to remove it if it's not in array we want to add it simple as that so here uh, for this setter i'm gonna expand it to a function with curly braces like this i'm gonna do if current position filter includes the position we want to remove remove filter otherwise else we will return we will add the filter which means that we will return the things that we were returning right now so removing the filter i will do i will do a yeah current position filter i will filter through that array filter and position and i will keep all the position that are not equal to my position so if i'm trying to delete defender i'll keep everything that is not equal to defender position save and now let's try to press again uh can find variable position position mm -hmm. What's going on? No. please if current filter includes uh, 
yeah it should work let's open the filters press forward press again it's deselected press again it's selected and now we will have only one position filter of the same type like in the filter uh, like not more than once if it's once if we press again we will take it out from there okay so this is how we add um, remove things from the global state with recoil okay let's uh, let me have a look at the chat okay uh have a dim is does this belong to the game development with react native um not really it's not a lot about game development to be honest uh we're focusing more uh today on global state management with recoil uh would love to get to do an interview with you if possible thank you very much uh hit me up uh, on linkedin or on email and we might do it I actually did an interview previous week. Um, I posted it on LinkedIn and YouTube. Not, I, I posted a link on YouTube. If you're interested, you can go check that out. Uh, Vadim, this is not your current build, but could you show us how to integrate Amazon Cognito for user authentication uh, in Spotify clone? um i suggest you to have a look at how we did the same thing for all the applications that we have implemented like youtube um, amazon twitter what else like all of them like uber in every application we have implemented authentication and it's really pretty simple like not a lot of things to do just have a look at as an example and try to do it uh, for the uber clone if we didn't implement it there i don't remember for you you're saying spotify yeah i think we didn't do that in spotify mm -hmm, mm -hmm. will you share the source code at the end of a stream i want to follow along while practicing yes of course i already shared the code that we have built in the first part of this video um you can find it on my github yeah i'm not gonna check out in the github or scroll a bit up i share the link yeah here it is come on are you going to use reanimated in future projects maybe maybe i didn't uh, think about that will you share resource card yes yes okay if you insist i can do it right now here is the source code at the moment it has the ui that we developed in the beginning of the video at the end i'm going to share everything that we did hey hey bro thank you very much for the donation let me try it uh, so my deep pal i hope i pronounce your name correctly thank you very much for the donation oh there is a cute sticker here <laughs> all right uh video about more languages uh internet internationalization oh my god i cannot pronounce that name i18n <laughs> yeah I, I i can do that in future i will add it to my list a lot of to do to do list videos like a lot of plans for the future okay let's continue with the filters so we save the filters what we implemented we have all the players in the state we have all the filters in the state that we want uh, to filter these players now we need to actually filter the players based on these filters as i was saying uh, this is derived data this is data that is based on another data from our state like filtered fil players depends on the players so to declare to define uh, 
Um, whew, to define the de de derivative data, derived data, we use selectors. So let's see how it works. Uh, filtered players, players is going to be a selector. Selector we are importing besides atom from recoil. We also have a key, uh, filtered players. And instead of a default value, we have a getter. Okay, and here we will need to, to do some logic and to return a new value. Um, in order to be able to get our state values, we will import the, the get method that we receive here in this function. Using this, we can say const uh, players equal get and we will get all players state. This way we receive a state from here. We actually subscribe to that state and whenever the players will be updated, our selector will reevaluate, rerun. So what do we want to do with these players? Also, not only the players, but also the filters because we need them filters. So we will return the players, but not all of them. We will filter and we will keep in the filter array only a player that is included, only a player which position is included in our filters. So if filters, filters dot uh, includes the player dot position if filters include the player position we will keep it in state otherwise we, we ignore it let's save it um, okay right now we should see all of them if i remove if i only keep forward if i go back uh, I don't see anything because we are not using the filtered players. We are still using all players state. But see that um, all player state is an atom, but filtered players is a selector. Now keep that in mind and we go to the players list. Uh, let's import filtered players. So by just replacing the, the, um, the value in the use recoil value, we switch from, uh, from all players to the filter players. But because the API is the same, we don't need to change anything. Because the API I mean of an atom and a selector. They are the same, we don't need to change anything. So here we see only forward people. If I go to here and uh, select goalkeepers i think i don't have any okay defenders i have two of them and this is like instantly you see um one more thing if i don't have any filter selected i don't see anything but i want to see all of them in that case i'm gonna go back here in the logic of filtering so player will be kept if uh filters dot length is equal to zero or other or this um, check so if it's zero all players will be included as you can see here all players are included if no filters are selected if i select mid i see only mid <laughs> middle field players if I select mid and forward, that's what I'm gonna see. Yeah, this is how to work with selectors. Um, what do you think about that? Is this clear, like how we keep all the data in state on all players, 
we also keep the filters in state. And then we have a derived data, like a data that we can calculate on the fly based on this state fields. We can subscribe components to this selector the same way as we can subscribe components to an atom. Uh, and one more thing is that whenever we change a dependency of a selector, in this case, the dependencies is the filters. Whenever I change the filters, this function will be recalled and our values are updated here instantly. Like I update, it's there. Okay. You do great content. It's awesome. Thank you very much. I have one question about state management. Have you used a React query? Uh, nope, I haven't. But I think React query is not specifically a state management, but um, a query management, a, a query library to, to query uh, remote data, isn't it? Whoa, so much knowledge shared. Greetings from Kenya. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Caleb. Hey bro, can you please tell how to apply gradient colors in React Native? I am new to React Native. Uh, for gradients, I was actually using a library. Uh, I use gradients at Fitinium, so there is a library. Maybe there are better options now. I don't know. I didn't. Linear gradient React Native. Let me know if there are better ways right now, because this is, I remember a couple of years ago, I implemented it and forgot. Yeah, this one. Okay, moving on. What do we have here? We have all player state. We have filter players. Okay, now is the interesting part. My team state. So whenever I will press, where is it? On a player here in this list, I want it to be selected and showed here on the field. Right? Right. Okay, mm, so for um, managing the state of my team, I'm going to create a new file. Uh, let's say, I don't know, my team.ts, my team. Uh, what will my team contain? It will contain const. Uh, my team state, my, let's see my players, right? My players state is gonna be an atom. The key is gonna be this name. And the default is gonna be an empty array. Let's see, also import the atom from recoil. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have it here. We have it here. All right, so uh, whenever I press, whenever I press on a, on a player here, um, In this list, I need to add it into the my player's state. Uh, okay, okay. Let's go to our my player player list here. And not actually player list, but player list item, because that's where we are rendering a player. Whenever we click on it, we need to add it to my team or remove it from there. I don't know, we'll see. So here, um, we need, we need a couple of things. We need to import uh, both use recoil 
state from recoil we also need to import the atom that we just created import import atoms and my team and it's called my what is it called my players I'll do it with lowercase. Okay, let's import it from there. My player state. And here, let's do it like this. Uh, const my players and set my players equal use recoil state use recoil state use recoil state and which state my player state save set my set my players now we need to uh, hey 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 before going there keep it up keep it up let's go thank you very much for the donation <laughs> yeah it's uh, it's really motivating for me. Okay, so uh, before moving forward, we need to transform this view into a pressable because we need to assign a one press pressable. So I'm gonna replace the view with a pressable on press on press. I'm gonna define this function on press here. That is gonna do all the logic when we press on them player okay so what do we need to do one press invalid user equal state uh, yeah we need to export don't forget to export that was the issue and refreshing and here we are so on press if i do console warn console warn player press okay player pressed yeah we register the clicks that's good so what do we need to do uh when we press let's say simply first of all let's add uh the current player to the my player list so i'm gonna update the current array that we have there so current players we're gonna uh return a new array with all the values from the current players and also the new player the player that we use in this component okay uh, it complains about the, um, the type uh, and for that reason i'm gonna go to the my team and my players will be an array of player of actual players that we can import from the types import player from the types uh, going back here shortly it should be uh, fixed yeah it is and now let's also do a console log my players to see if we actually add things to the state because visually on the UI nothing will change because we didn't implement it yet. So array empty. Okay, I add Cristiano Ronaldo. I see. Uh, yeah, it's it's him. I add something else. We see two players there. Uh, the issue is if I'll press two times, I'll see the same you uh, the same player two times. So we need to fix that. 
But before that, I'm gonna, I want to give some visual feedback to the user to understand if the player is selected or not. Uh, hmm. Okay, yeah, so uh, style container. Here we have, uh, yeah, we don't have border color, but it's okay because we are gonna add it here. But we want to add some background color if current player is inside our list. So const is selected equal to, we will check if my players contains my players dot includes uh, let's say p if my player includes a player with the same id as the current player that we render player dot id we could compare like player with player p with player but it's better to compare like ids with ids just to make sure that uh, even if they have some different things but have the same ID, we will consider that they are the same. Okay, what's going on here? Uh, use recoil state. What's going on? Uh, we'll see. I think it's not a big issue. So style, let's add a style based on if it's selected or not. I'm gonna add here background, background color. So if is selected, I'm gonna add a, let me check some, a good color that we have. Okay, this might work. If it's selected, is this one? Otherwise, is white. Okay. So let's try to select some players. Select. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. My players. My players. Is an array. My players. Hmm. Uh, do, do, do. where my players use recoil state p.id but p should be a, a player not includes because it's some yep yep sorry includes uh, works on like array and strings but here we want to, to, to use a, f a separate function to check if there, there exists something there. So we'll use the sum. Okay, if I press, I see that I can select them. Of course, I cannot deselect them. But as we did in the previous time, we can uh, fix that. So, uh, two, two, two. Current players here. I will expand it to like a normal function here with curly brackets. Uh, I will check if if uh, current players. I'm gonna copy this one, but replace my player with current players. You might think that they are the same, like my players and current players, but sometimes there might be a difference. Uh, so this is a way to always update the things that are exactly there in state. So current players, I'm gonna, if current players, some, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then we are gonna remove, okay, return. We need to remove a player from the current players. So play current players dot filter. Uh, the player, we will leave it in the array only if 
the id of that player is different than the player id so we keep everything except this player instead right probably otherwise we just add it let's have a look let's press on ronaldo i think it worked i already saw that it's working ronaldo press back it's out if i press okay that's good that's good as you can see i can select deselect and so on okay the next step is to besides showing them here in the list also show them on the map can you upload a lot of training technologies technologies um yeah i can i just need time and sleep and coffee uh, how much time are we going three and a half hours okay but we don't have a lot of things yet oh we have also api fetching okay let's get going i want to to be done in 30 minutes let's try it okay now our goal is to render the players on the map if i open our components uh, field i will see here the way that we the data struct the structure that we keep our players to display them here basically we group them by position however in our state we just put all of them into an array we do that because it will be easier to to operate them it will be easier to check if a player exists if it's not if to add them and so on however in this specific case we need to to present them in a different way what does that mean that means that we need to uh to to de derive this data and to do that we're going to use a selector just to change the um, um just to change the, 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 the shape, like the, the, the presentation way of the players. We need to group them by the position. Okay. Um, let's do that. Export. But that's not in players. That's in my team. My team. Okay. Export const. <laughs> my uh, players uh, by position my players grouped by position is equal to a selector the key is going to be this one my player by position and the getter like how we get it is going to be a function first of all we need uh, all the players like all the players is equal get uh, my players state let's also not forget import the select selector are you planning to do our 12 hours uh, coding channel ch challenge not now <laughs> not now i will I, I plan to, to finish it under four hours now but yeah it's it's really interesting and i really want to show you everything that is possible to do with recoil including fetching apis so let's let's get there so we get all the players now now we need to do let's as you see where we here where is the field field is here our players is an object it's not an array it's an object so let's do my team grouped uh, players is equal to an object 
Now let's. Uh, we had somewhere an array of positions, right? I think we need to do it in a more global way, like array of positions. But uh, I'll just copy it from where, just to remember where player list item. No filters in the filters, right? In the filters, we have here this array. Yeah. So we need to put in this object a key with where the value will be all the players with this position. So positions. We loop through them for each position. And for each position, we say, what do we say? We say that grouped players uh, with the key position, for example, grouped players at forward is equal Grouped player position is equal to all the players with this position. So meaning that we will do a filter, we will do players, all the players, I mean, all but not all <laughs> filtered by player where player dot position is equal to position. Is it complicated? Is it confusing? since types position and string have no overlap. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Uh, do, do, do. Hmm. That is a of type in num like forward and so on. If a num is hmm, how to make them also as a num position array? Can I import it? No. I need to export it from types, export in new forward mid. Now I can import it. What can I do with that? Conversion of type string to position. Maybe mistake because neither types are short. I'm a bit lost. So in Noom, TypeScript in Noom, I'm a bit lost. TypeScript in Noom. Mm -hmm. But if I do forward equal to forward and mid equal to mid, and def equal to def. Goalkeeper. Okay, now. Now it works. Now it works. Yeah. Okay, so grouped players at position element implicit implicitly can, has a type any because expression of uh, to string will it work no let's keep it like this and let's just uh, return grouped players and we'll see if it works or not grouped players okay we grouped them now let's 
let's use this my players by position in the field in the field component instead of these players instead of these players i'm gonna use the recoil value const uh, players and here i can use recoil just recoil value not state recoil because i don't need the setter value and recoil value will be my players by position okay it helped me it imported automatically and i can comment this out because i don't need it anymore but first let me console log players can you make can you make a dynamic background transition where if i change the formation from mm -hmm, the background also changes with that formation before selecting the respective players uh but that's not regarding the background image that's that's very easy if i'll have time i'll show you mm, yeah that, that's just i'll even show you like in a moment yeah thank you for asking so console log players let's have a look what's happening there we don't see anything but that's okay because we don't have any players in the, um, in our list so if i add a player here it appears in, in our list forward and i see it here if i delete it it's not there okay that works actually mid as well let me add a couple of them i'll actually add a lot so the thing that you were asking like look look at the top we have two players there if i add the third player it's going to be there so you don't need to change the background it's actually how many players you will render on the screen they will all fit in that list like if i have four here i have i, I display all of them like uh, as following um, regarding the formations i'll show you how to limit for example not to be able to add more than three or more than four like to be able to select like what formation you want because right now i don't have any formation and i can select all of them like as you can see here this is a perfect team in my case uh, so yeah i can deselect them um, yeah grouping works grouping works okay now uh, the idea is to to limit it based on the formation so uh, limiting based on the formation whenever we add a player to my players we need to check if our formation permits for example if our formation says that we have three uh, defenders and we want to add the third the fourth defender we shouldn't be able to do that uh, so i'm gonna add a simple atom here in all player state called export const my formation um yeah it's gonna have a default value and i'm not gonna implement the logic behind changing the formation but you can do that easily and um yeah based on this you'll see different things on the screen so the key is all players state mm -hmm. no 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 my my formation my formation Uh, let me make sure that i'm doing it correctly okay so here um, the default value will be an object uh, where the keys is the positions uh, of the players so forward how many we want in forward we want three probably mid three uh, defender four and goalkeeper one right okay that's our formation now uh,
Okay, we need to uh, uh, to get this to use this uh, state value about my formation uh, where we add players in state, and that happens in our player list item. Here we add players to state here, right? But what we need to do is check uh, if it's possible to add then add it because if that position is full we shouldn't be able to add more to do that i'm gonna do const uh, my formation where is it oh players my team players oh it shouldn't be in players it should be in my team file because it's about my team my formation state let's call it to keep it consistent my formation state okay so but here my formation is equal use recoil value not state we want only the value of it my formation state all right let's import this one and Uh, tu, 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 tu. I'll, I'll create a, a, a helper function number of players on position we will receive a position and we will return my players dot actually this can be a selector like number of players on position but uh, i'm gonna keep it as a local function my players dot filter where player dot position is equal to the position that we want to count and then we will return the length position okay now uh, let's check if it's possible to add so if number of players on position actually we don't need a, a dynamic position because we know the player position so number of players on the position of the player and this actually should can be just a value not a function we do, we can calculate it right away yeah number of players on position okay and when we will check it we will check if number of players on position is less than current formation my formation my formation let's check how many available spots are on the position of this player so if this player is forwarder we want to check how many position are for this spot so my formation dot player dot position position this will return the available spots and if the number of players on that position is less than the available spots we will be able to add a new player there okay quite complicated uh, from the logic perspective uh, but hopefully you you get the idea behind it so let's view players let's add let's try to add i will filter based on forwarders and i'll try to add one two three and we shouldn't be able to add one more four uh, undefined is not an object, my players filter. Uh, tu, 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 tu. Okay, uh, because we don't return anything else at the end, so I will just return current players that exist. Yes, let's not forget to do that. So let's filter based on forward. Let's add one, two, three. The fourth shouldn't be possible. Fourth 
it's not possible. If I want to add it, I need to deselect the previous one and select this one. Yeah, this is how we limit the amount of uh, players we want to add on a specific position. Okay, that's good. Uh, one more thing is if you remember, initially we were displaying uh, like empty icons for players that are missing because right now we don't see anything. But that was, that was possible because our array contained the amount of possible players, but they were null. So we still were able to loop through them. They were null, meaning like a missing player, but an existing position, if that, if that makes sense. So that's what we are gonna do. Uh, because right now, if we don't have any forwarders, we, we are returning just empty array. That's why we don't see anything. However, we should return all the forwarders that we have there, for example, ID one, and fill it in with null values up to the point, like based on the number in the formation, like based on how many players we expect there on that position. Oh, uh, who can count how many times I said the word position in this video? Speaking about that, let's go to my player's item and here, no, my team. Yeah, in the, in the state, in the global state. Uh, here, here, we are adding all the all the players on that position. And now we need to say fill uh, with null values uh, up to the amount of uh, expected players from formation. That means that here we will also need to get the, our formation or formation equal get my formation state like this and fill it, fill it. Hola. Okay. Someone is here? No? Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Let's govern my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Um when I was preparing I did it in a hacky way. <laughs> in a hacky way, but that's a bit confusing, like why it works. So what do we need to do? We need to loop um, uh, X amount of times where X is the existing players on that position. I mean, total players on that position minus existing ones. So if we have, if we expect free uh, forward, uh, and we have only one, we need to loop two times. So for uh, let i is equal to um, grouped players, like existing players dot length, uh, and while i is less than I don't remember when I wrote the last time a usual for uh, statement in JavaScript. Every time I write for each and map and so on. So uh, as long as less than my formation or just formation, uh, formation at the position, I plus plus, we need to do what? We need to push, no, like this. 
to that array, we need to push a null value. Push null save. Okay, our empty placeholders are back in place, as you can see. So if I view players, if I add Ronaldo, it's gonna be added here. Uh, we don't see it because instead of, let, let, let's render also the name on, of the player on the field. So field player TSX, we have here player. So instead of here of rendering the position, I will check if player is not null, I will render player dot name. Otherwise I render just a position because we don't know the name. Cristiano Ronaldo there. If I check this one, we see it there. Next one, and that's it. If I deselect, I again see placeholder items. And this is based on the um, formation, which means if I change the formation here, defenders to automatically they're changed here. And with that being said, you can uh, create a selector that will choose different formation. And yeah, it will automatically update it here on the screen. You might make sure that you don't have more players already selected. So an easy way to do that is to remove all the players when you change the formation and to start from scratch, or just to, I don't know, to remove the access players. Eh, depends on how you see it. Yeah, I can add two goalkeepers. Save. All right, so with that being said, we have everything here, right? We have my team state. Okay, okay, okay. Now the last and the most interesting thing is fetch API to fetch this data from an API. Do we still have time and do we still have power to do that? What do you think, guys? What do you think is the best way to learn web app development from your experience? Yeah, I said that a lot of times, uh, but in my experience, and I think for a lot of people, the best way to learn web and app development is by actually building projects. So yeah, if you don't know anything about that uh, technology, you can go look through some tutorials. If you're learning React Native, uh, follow along some of my builds. And after that, start to work on a real project that you want to do. That's gonna be the best way to learn it. You are doing great, man, thank you. We learn by doing, yes. Truth said the truth. What do you think? Okay, love your coding. Thank you very much. I've been following you for a while and I have learned a lot from this channel. I'm coding with you from Sierra uh, Leone. True happiness comes by helping others. Yes, thank you very much for the kind words. Thank you that you, I'm glad that you found this helpful. For us beginners, it's very easy to be stuck in the terms they call tutorial hell. hell. Yes, I agree. That's why I always encourage you to start working on actual projects and to build along with me. Don't, don't just watch, like build along with me. Then do the same thing, but in another project, like implement more features that I'm doing here on tutorial. Go that one extra mile. Like, I don't know, you're interested on, for example, here, let's take this application and as, as an example. I told you as an idea how you can have dynamic formations, like have a selector somewhere to change the formation and update the state here. You saw how to update the state, you know how to do that. Just create a selector and do that. And you'll understand that at that point, like you will, uh, you will learn better and you will retain the information longer. Okay, so I already start <laughs> talking slow, which I don't like. Oh, let's go. 
water, stay hydrated, guys. Okay, the last step, the last step uh, regarding the fetch API. What uh, do I mean by that? Uh, okay, so at the moment, our players, like the values for our players is coming from assets, data, players from here. We have dummy data. If you want to fetch the real players from a real API, you can do that. I found an API on the rapidapi.com and it is called, one moment. Yeah, rapidapi.com and we will search for football, API football. Yeah, this is a separate service, like this is a separate API that you can find at API Football. We have our own website, uh, but with Rapid API, it's much easier to, to get started and to query the API. So if you need to, if you want to follow along this part, you will need to sign up and create an account here and register the API Football here on Rapid API to be able to get an API key. All right, with that being said, like there are a lot of things going on here in this API. However, I found uh, the thing that we, we actually need, which is where? Players somewhere here, players. We have players by league ID. So our league, where is it? If I scroll here down, our league, if I don't, if I'm correct, it has an idea of four. You can query all the leagues here and you'll see like the idea of a league that you, you are searching for. But I found that uh, our uh, UEFA 2020 is, has an idea of four and the season is 2020. If I run this uh, request, test endpoint, Hey bro, thank you for another donation. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I love the sticker. Okay. So if I run this query, I get a list of players. Uh, so here the response contains a list of players and each player contains information about the player itself. For example, name, first name, age, height, and so on. And also statistics about this player in this league that we are searching. So here we have the team that he is playing for, uh, number of games that he worked. And with this information, we will be able to calculate the scores for our fantasy game. Mm, position, defender, for example. Uh, shots, how many shots, a lot of statistics there, uh, here. But the most important part from here, we will need his position, which is in games.position. Okay, uh, but before getting into this, I have downloaded uh, this JSON that you would receive from the API. So you can test a little, thing, a little bit of things without doing uh, actual queries here. Because for this API, I think you have only 100 uh, free requests per day. The rest uh, have a very small fee, but still. So in order not to do a lot of requests, we're gonna use the response JSON that I downloaded from there already for you. So let's work a bit with this and then we'll replace this response just with the uh, querying the API. Okay, we have this response. We go to the atoms, we go to the players because we here we are speaking about all players. All players. We delete the, the dummy data players. And here for the default, we will import 
initially import uh, response from response from assets data response. Um, yeah, the difference between the way we had it previously, where our players were coming from the dummy data, is that we had them like a build time, like they getting the players is a synchronous task, like it happens at the same moment. Now we are switching to fetching an API. And when you fetch an API, you don't get the results at the same time, you need to wait. So for that reason, our players uh, state should become a selector because atoms cannot be asynchronous. Selectors on the other hand can be async. So instead of default, here we will have this get, which will be an async function. Async function, which will return um, we need to somehow parse this response initially because we don't do anything with it. We, we don't do any queries. We just imitate that we receive the response and we just need to, uh, to parse it somehow. Uh, to, to, to let me find where I parsed it. Okay. Oh, baby. First of all, let's analyze a bit of the structure of this response. So this response is, uh, is an object which contains a response key. And here is all the players that we are searching. For that reason, we will need to uh, return, for example, response dot response that's how we get here now uh, because we expect we expect these players to be an array of actual players of the type players with id name match price position and total points we need to map through the response through all the players that we get there because it's a bit different so every entry is going to be mapped to an object, an object that will have all these properties. Now we need to think how to get these properties from the object that we receive from uh, the API. So for the ID, uh, yeah, each entry contains player and statistics. So the ID will be entry.player.id. This is the ID. Entry.player.id. Okay. Name. Entry.player.name. Entry.player.name. Match. I couldn't find it here. You'll probably need to do some extra queries to see where this player is playing for each team and using like the fixtures here on top probably you'll need more so for to keep it simple i'm just gonna hard code it to some three letters okay price price as well i couldn't find it here so um yeah for the price i'm gonna just hard code the price for the moment. I cannot write some numbers. Oh. Position. Position we should go to entry dot statistics at position zero because statistic is an array. It's very confusing. Statistic at position zero games uh, position and as you see here it's defender not the way we have them like with three letters like def so first of all let's go there uh, it's 
entry dot statistics dot at position zero it's an array dot game dot position okay uh, but we need to somehow map from um, from for example defender to death from here we have like i don't know like goalkeeper to the j like yeah both ones <laughs> so i have a, i have a map here where is it these are the names from the api and these are the names that we want in our state so i'm just gonna say uh, position at position to position position to position uh, using this key that is coming from the API. So if it's attacker, it will return forward. If it's defender, it will return uh, depth, middle field, mid, goalkeeper, uh, this one. And total points as well, we don't have it. We can calculate it somehow if we have some logic, uh, if we yeah, want to define some logic. But for now, I'm gonna keep it as uh, hard coded here. So let's save it and let's see if our application is still working it's not because um yeah because our query is a thing and um and yeah while we wait for the data to be available we need to somehow show like a loading component or something like that we need to wait until the data is available uh, to do that react introduced uh, a component called suspense this is a very new component like it's uh, it will be react suspense it's gonna be in a stable version only in react um, 18 but it was introduced as experimental in React 16.13, I think. So in our case, it exists, but it's still uh, experimental. So what we do with this suspense, we wrap a component that will wait for, uh, for asynchronous data. We will give it a fallback component. And while we wait, we will show that fallback component. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you very much, uh, View, for joining the membership. That's really, really awesome. So I really appreciate that. I'm a bit tired to show you my gratitude, but yeah, that, that means a lot to me and your support, guys, like your, the fact that you're decided, you decide to support me monthly uh, by becoming a member on the channel is really really awesome so i really appreciate that first time even first time watching my live streams come on why how, how did you decide to become a member from the first time that's that's really weird like did i uh, give you so much confidence that you'll find value here or did you already gain a lot of value from this live stream i'm li really curious like First person watching, becoming a member. Really nice, thank you very much. Okay, so as I was saying, with this suspense, we need to wrap our components that are waiting for data to be able to render a loading component. It's actually mandatory to do that uh, because you saw we, have a, we had an error saying that player list suspending while rendering but not fallback ui or specify okay so where we are using player list we are using that in our screens tab one screen right we have here player list let's wrap it into a suspense is it suspense or suspend yeah i think it's suspense Okay, and we need to add um, a fallback component. 
So when while we are waiting, we will display, uh, let's say, a text with loading. Uh, so slow, so slow. Just a little bit more. PC, like today you were good, like you, you didn't lag so much. But at the end, come on. Let's finish this in a good manner. So if I reload right now. Uh, you saying because your videos are awesome, I learned a lot from your videos. Uh, like how you structure your project. Thank you very much. Yeah. I, yeah, put a lot of time into preparing these projects in order for them to be um, structured and to the point, like not to waste a lot of your time, guys. So let's import suspense from React. Save. And and if I is not an object, entry statistics game position. Okay, okay, I know why. I know why. Because it's not game, but it's games, right? It's games. C. Uh, it's games. Save. Player list suspended while rendering. But I added you to a suspense. Why? Player list suspense. Yeah, see. Let's try to rerun the application. Reload. Uh, player list. Where else do we display the player list? Only here. No. Why do we have all? Oh, we had it two times, so that was the issue. We had it in two times, one in suspense and one in not suspense. And all right, guys. So here are the actual players that are coming from our response.json. That I yeah. This is the response that you'll get from the API if you if you make a call. So these are actual names. These are actual pictures. I cannot confirm because I'm not following uh, football right now. Uh, but yeah, these are them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, today your computer was behaving just fine, no lags. Yeah, because previous time I was already watching, looking for to, to get a new computer to have a two PC streaming uh, setup, where on this PC I will only code, on the other PC I will stream. So maybe he saw like what I was searching and he understood that he's at risk <laughs> and starts behaving good. Okay, so uh, one more step. Like let's 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 uh, finish everything that we started. Okay, we are getting them from here. Let me show you what happens with asynchronous logic, with suspense, and so on, because you didn't see anything happening there. However, if I go to, 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 to players here, instead of returning right away uh, the, the, the response, I'm just gonna wrap it into a promise and return it after five seconds, just to simulate a very long request and to show the loading, lo the loading component. So uh, return new promise. Uh, to, 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 to resolve a reject. Yeah, don't worry about this syntax because it might be confusing in the beginning, like with new promise and awaiting so on, but I just want to show you how it works, like the, the waiting stuff. And here I'm gonna do a set, set time out and I'm gonna be a function and the timeout will be, let's say 10 seconds, just to make sure that we, we see it. And here, instead of returning, we will resolve 
with this value. Where, where? Uh, here. Ooh. Confusing. Resolve response. Set time out. Time out. Resolve. Actually, it might be. It might work. I don't know what's happening there. Don't worry. Let me refresh and open the players. And we should see a loading component. Yeah, loading. Because, yeah, after 10 minutes, only after 10 seconds, I mean, we will populate everything with the players. And yeah, as you see, 10 seconds passed and we see all of them here. This is just to simulate a very long fetch to the server. So usually you fetch the server, there is like this, I don't know, up to a second wait time, depending on your network bandwidth. And during that time you show like a loading screen and then you show like the component itself. So to do that, we, we, we use suspense. This is a new feature in React, so really excited about that. Uh, okay, let me... Let me go back to what we had before because it, it was a bit simpler. Not that confusing for you. And now, okay. Now let me show you how to actually call the API. How to actually do the call. Whew. I set myself a lot of like very high goals, like a lot of things. For, for a single video, <laughs> that's, that's too much. But we are almost at the end and I'm very happy that we managed to do everything and everything worked as expected. Okay, players. Mm -hmm. So first of all, let's go here on this page. And if I go to the code snippet and I select here JavaScript, where is JavaScript? JavaScript and fetch. Here they show me um, exactly the code that I need to run to fetch the data in our JavaScript. And yeah, in React Native, we have this fetch API, which we can use to fetch uh, data. Uh, yeah, here you'll have your API key, uh, the host and so on. I'll transform from um, dot van, I'll transform it to await. So const response equal to await, await fetch. Okay. Um, also, the response, we need to transform the response from uh, like bytes to JSON. And to do that, we can do a wait, a wait response dot JSON. JSON, okay. And the JSON dot response, right? Map entry. And now, this JSON will contain the thing that you saw here. This is the JSON that we get using the fetch API. So let's have a look if it, that worked. I'm gonna refresh to make sure that I start from scratch. And if I view player, they're here, they're coming from the API and they're coming from the API because I don't know, I can set here, let's say page two, just to, to see different players. Because right now we see some players. If I re reload, oh no, not dollar sign, but and like this. Try again. What happened? I did that. Okay, let's have a look at the console. Uh, here. 
my server stopped. Yeah, because this API call, I think, not I think, I know that it's a good practice to put it into a try catch. Uh, like everything we're gonna put into a try catch because if we cannot fetch the things from, uh, from the API, in that case, like I had a wrong URL, then our application will not crash. Catch, catch, come on, catch, error. I'm gonna <laughs> laggy, laggy, laggy. I can console log the error and I can return an empty array just not to return, just to return something, you know? So if there is an error, I'll return an empty array. Perfect. Uh, okay. Let's rerun the application. What laptop do you have? Uh, I have a MacBook Pro uh, 2000. 19 or 2020 i guess 13 inch small one that holds the streaming software the emulator a lot of google chrome tabs presentation and a lot of things but it holds good job good job love your videos vadim you're a treasure on youtube thank you very much for the support you you make me continue doing things. So let's see for the page two, different players, as you see, different players. That means, that means that our API is actually working. It's fetching from, um, from uh, API football, public API. And what else can I say? I'm very happy that we managed to do everything. Did, did we cover everything? I know what we didn't cover, but that's gonna be your homework. And it's not that complicated. Actually, I can do it like in five minutes. Should I do it? And speaking about like the, the remaining here on the top. Uh, it's, it's gonna be even less than 20 minutes. So we need to, <laughs> for that stats, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it because if I'm not gonna do it, who is gonna do it? And we have a new donation. Thank you very much. That means that it's worth it. So let's go guys. Let's finish this stream with, uh, with a lot of donations and with a lot of features. Atoms my team we need to, uh, to, to, to export we need two selectors uh, actually actually I was thinking we need a, a selector for the number of players but do we actually need eh, maybe we can N number of players in my team is going to be a selector key is gonna be number of players and we get to get the number of players we are gonna we are going to hey chris thank you very much i didn't think that that would work i appreciate that that's very generous of you. So as I was saying, I'm a bit tired, but yeah, I'm very happy that we did so much in this video. It has been more than four hours. Yeah, four hours and 20 minutes. Oh, 420. Okay, 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 get. Uh, we need to, what, get. We need to return the getter of my players state. This is an array of all my players and we need just the length. Okay, 
and let's do one more uh, total value, right? Or value of players. Value of players. We are gonna get all the players, and we are gonna um, we are gonna reduce all the players to one value. So reduce reduce the reducer receives uh, accumulator receives a player and we need to sum them to sum the accumulator plus player dot uh, price or how did we call it uh, price and we're gonna start from zero. Yeah, guys, master the array math as like reduce, filter, sum, and so on because they make it so much easier. Uh, okay, let let's let let's implement them. Let's just display and see if I did them correctly. So in the components, we go into the stats somewhere stats player. Where is it? Component. Filters, player list. We don't have a stats screen. Tab one screen. Team stats. Team stats. Where is it? I cannot find I cannot see it. Okay, here. Team stats. Okay, we will need the value. Uh, const. number of players players equal use recoil value and what value we need the number of players and the same way for the second one second one pc please hold it hold it together Team stats, yes, thank you. Um, value is gonna be, please, please, just a little bit more. Come on. Number of players. Let's import user coil value. Use recoil value, come on. No, it will not work like this. Import, use, use recoil value from recoil. And we need to import these selectors uh, atoms my team okay so let's try to display number of players instead of zero here i'm gonna say number of players and remaining is gonna be 100 mil minus value so it's 100 mil minus value save zero okay we have a remaining of that we can uh, divide by 100 by 1 mil to display how many millions divide by that and everything is gonna be dot to fixed one one point yeah we have 10 mils okay i forgot one more zero here 100 mils yes let's view players select one 
automatically updated, one player, 88 left, select the next one, 77, and so on. So that's how you create uh, the statistics with automatically update. It will, not, it will not stop people from buying more. But I think neither does UEFA do. Only like you cannot save it, like you need to rearrange them. And if I deselect, I have remaining increases. Okay, now I can say that I did everything that we have planned for today. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, questions guys. Shoot them uh, in because I'm very tired. Like let's, let's take a couple of questions and let's call it a day and jump into the weekend because it's Friday. Okay. So what did I want it to do? I wanted to true, true, true. do it. git add git commit global state management with recoil guys how did you find recoil i'm really curious in the comments how uh, how is recoil compared to redux in terms of complexity and how how easy it is to understand and to get started That was great, thank you. Thank you very much for watching till the end. Oh, okay. One more thing, uh, just as a recommendation for future, I would create uh, Atoms folder and the separate folders outside, like here. Uh, for the selectors just to keep them separated and I would keep like atoms and selectors in different screens but still I'll keep files um, for a specific domain for example for players we have atoms players here and we have selectors players the same name of the file with all the selectors that we have like this one this one and so on this way like you keep it, uh, you split the code and you keep it more clean. Uh, drink water, please. Uh, I don't have a lot of water, uh, but I'm going to drink it uh, definitely. So thank you for, for taking care of it. Hello, thank you for uh, making this type of videos. Where is it? Yeah. Hello, thank you for uh, making this type of videos. Uh, I have learned so much from you. Please make some videos regarding app performance. Yes, thank you very much for appreciating it. And regarding optimization, uh, yeah, we're gonna do some videos about that as well. We're I, I'm speaking with, uh, with Lucas, with one of uh, developers from Fitinium, and he is working a lot with optimizations nowadays and he might be interested in writing some blog post about how to optimize using use callback, use memo and other hooks like that. By the way, did you check out the new not just dev platform? Who checked it out? Write yes in the in the chat. Okay. What are your plans for the future? Are you going to release courses or anything similar? Uh, the best answer will be probably, I'll create a separate video for this because I, there are a lot of things happening on uh, like in my life and I, there are a lot of things that will change soon. Um, but <clears throat> that's very good news for you guys. Like long story short, I'm going to have much more time to work uh, for the content for, 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 for the content for YouTube. 
and that's gonna be most probably my full-time uh, activity from from very soon i'm finishing university and some other things are going on and yeah i want to, to create more courses including free courses and including paid advanced and very um yeah courses that will get into a lot of details that i am planning to do but i understand that this is only for some of you for some of you this is going to be very interesting because this is advanced features that i'm planning to do um and yeah that's what i'm planning to do <laughs> if that makes sense i am quite tired uh... Nice one, Vadim. I remember last stream when everyone was requesting you to create this app. Yes, that's actually true. Everyone in the, not everyone, like a lot of people in the chat were requesting a fantasy game app. And yeah, I didn't know anything about fantasy games. I, I mean, I heard about them, but I wasn't involved in these kind of applications. And I ran a poll on YouTube asking you if you'd be interested and a lot of people, like more than 50% of people said yes. So here we are, uh, combining learning new technologies like Recoil with building something fun. Love it. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm from India, uh, not able to use Google Maps API as it is not compatible, any suggestions? Mm, to be honest, I don't know, like, from the top of my head, any Google, API, Google Maps alternatives, but there should be some. Wow. Is that legal? No? Uh, five minutes and I'm done. Okay. Let's see, let's see. Uh, um, hi, I wanted to know how did you prepare for this? Do we have to know all these models and stuff? How I prepared for this? Um, using the, the official documentation and trying things on my own. And yeah, like building it myself and getting into some problems and then researching how to solve them then understanding okay that's how it's work and so on but mostly from the official documentation uh, hi i wanted to know how okay will the video be on the channel yes the video is going to be published on the channel besides all other videos that we have there already we thank you for your efforts it's my pleasure guys um, yeah, I'm also learning a lot of new things together with you guys. So Recoil, for example, was something new for me. And without YouTube, I probably would only read about Recoil on some blog post, but never actually try it. But that's not how you learn. You learn when you actually implement it. So this weekend, go ahead and do the same thing uh, that I did on this, on this tutorial. Do it yourself and then add more features or implement recoil in a different application to, to really understand how it works. Where are you from? I'm from, originally I'm from Moldova. At the moment, I'm uh, staying in Spain, in Tenerife. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm excited. I became a fan of you. All right, guys, so thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for sticking till the end. Um, yeah, I really appreciate your support. And I will also appreciate if you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because from my analytics, I see that more than 95% of you are watching but are not subscribed. So um, take a minute, drop a subscribe. I'm very tired, I need to drink some water and you also need to drink some water and you also need to learn the recoil 